Uh, yeah, cool. Yeah. Who do you want me to add to the clip? Uh, uh, okay. Yeah, yeah, no need to no, eat. Yeah. Oh, they want some. She wants some. Our mics are kind of Uh huh. Ah. So I just have to wait then? Your life, but I need a we do a stalling show. How long is this man? How's it long does it take to get tested for COVID? Wait, Paul, you gotta, you gotta mute us in the stream. Please. We're, we're, we're live and we're talking. The savings all in the stream. Well, you're, you're relaying us. <laughs> It's, uh, it's not like anyone's watching, right? Yeah. Exactly. Okay. Nelson, you want to kick us off? All right, I'm kicking us off with the. All right, welcome back, everyone. We'll be playing. We'll be setting up for this next match between SKT versus TFT. Uh, what, do you, what are your thoughts today on these two contenders playing off against each other? Okay, so just as a bit of background, um, today we are kicking off with the semifinals. It's a best of three. Um, the this particular stream is going to cover the um, match between Mike's Muted and it's an eighth with Captain uh, SK Telecom Team 1 versus Captain Voidless. Um, on the other channel, uh, we have two streams going on today. We will have semifinal B with Shorting Gion Lu versus Sammy Diff. So definitely feel free to check out both games. I personally think that our game, semifinal A, is going to be more of a banger as uh, teams Mike's Muted and It's an Eighth are expected to be very, very close in power level. Um, so, uh, unfortunately, uh, Captain Voidless had to, um, have a quick medical emergency and he will be back in about 15 minutes. Um, so in the meantime, let, we, we have guest caster, uh, Captain Riot C-Max from Shrimp Gang here with us today. Uh, Riot C-Max, do you have any thoughts on... What to expect for this semifinal match? Um, in terms of expectations, I think that we can uh, expect this one to to be a banger. You know, once the group stage wrapped up, I, I think it was pretty clear that the the top teams had made it out of both of the groups, and so we can expect some some close matches. I think the series could go either way. Either team could win. Um, and honestly, like any of the teams who are left in the semifinals could win the entire tournament. So I'm really excited to see how it all plays out. What do you think of both teams' play styles? Um, I, well, I will say that since I was uh, playing yesterday, I didn't, I didn't watch uh, a ton of their games. And uh, I haven't... Uh, I certainly haven't seen too much of uh, Elijah's team play since we didn't scrim them a bunch. But um, I think that they, like, it's it's an eighth seems like a, a very, a very scary team to me. Um, I, really? I can't like name any specific styles, but I, I think that for the first game, um they they seem like they have more like possible win conditions maybe than mike's muted uh, i feel like mike's muted plays around tofu a lot and they really need their their captain to do a lot of the heavy lifting whereas when i've 
uh, played against it's an eighth. It, it doesn't seem like like Voidless is always there and and does a lot of work, but he he doesn't have to. Oh, so uh, just as a just just some background, uh, the team members for it's an eighth is JTB one hundred two up in the top lane, Minge Betty L nine in the jungle, Cardinal in the mid lane, Voidless in as the ADC and Entropy as the support. On the other side, for Mike Muted, we have a uh, local favorite, the Silver Smurfer himself, Green Epic up in the top lane, twice in the jungle, SK Telecom, T1 in the mid lane, Pharaoh as ADC, and Monkey Dong 123 as support. Yeah, and now this is going to be a really good close matchup between these two teams. Each team brings a different type of playstyle. Uh, looking at it's an eighth, what we saw yesterday was a banger when Minge Bay L9 took and the Master Yi into the jungle. So be prepared to uh, see some unprecedented uh, picks come from that team. You know, Then moving on to SKT, I would say the one to watch out for is the top lane, Green Epic. You know, It's sometimes gods flip a coin and, and you don't know if it's going to be heads or tails. <laughs> Um, how do, what do you guys think about the top lane matchup between Green Epic and JTB 102? Uh, I think it's definitely a little bit favored towards Green Epic, but I, if the games continue to go, uh, or at least if the drafts continue to go in the way that Mike's Muted has played them in the group stages, it means that they're going to be putting Green Epic on a low ego tank top laner. Or I think the most carry he was allowed to play was Darius the other day. I would love to see him on on the Darius or on the Kled and and see if he could abuse this matchup. But I I don't think that much is going to happen. Uh, I think he'll probably be on a tank top again, and we're probably just going to see tanks doing a wet noodle fight clearing waves top line so you're thinking more of a cc style tank top lane i'm more of excited for the fact that these players are all close and related to their rank so we're going to see some very i think a lot of this is going to be decided in the lane matchups per se and the whoever chooses the more um as we saw yesterday, it was more basically who has the easier comp to run, you know? Mm -hmm. um, we saw that the just chain CCing with the Orin and the Seraphine and um, the Leona were very popular picks that allowed for a lot of teams to win, you know? While we're looking also at um, just looking at it's an eighth, they are looking for more unprecedented picks to try to shake things up. I think what big carry roles they're trying to go for is trying to get Cardinal on them, cast it in. Let Minge Bay nine, L9 try to carry, and just letting Voidless and Entropy trying to win the bot lane. Speaking of bot lane, uh, what do you think between the Voidless and Pharaoh? Who is the better ADC slash who, how their different styles play into each other? Well, I think bot lane is definitely a support ADC. You know, it, it depends on the synergy. It, it's not just a one man kind of kind of place. Guess, guess oh. who's the support main on the cast? Oh yeah. Uh, so, <laughs> so when we talk about the bot lane, we actually have to talk about both Pharaoh and Monkey Dong One Two Three in comparison to Voidless and Entropy. Well, I do think Voidless and Entropy do have a leg up, as um, Voidless is a dedicated ADC player, and um, Entropy is also a much more experienced support. Um, I don't think we can rule out the Pharaoh Monkey Dong 1 2 3 lane. Um, Monkey Dong has done absolutely phenomenal this entire tournament. His Seraphine has been a sight to behold. The guy has pulled out like three man, four man, five man Seraphine ults and has been really catching people off guard. So I think he's the sleeper pick to look out for in these team fights in, in this like lane. Um, so I think it's going to be a treat to watch for sure. I think one thing to uh, one thing that I want to shout out at least is how much value, how much skill 
per amount of time played, Monkey Dong123 has shown this tournament. Uh, like before he was drafted for this tournament or knew that he was signing up, he's had a very, very low amount of experience playing this game, but he was able to really quickly ramp up and get to a point where he's able to be effective on these picks like the Seraphine uh, against the other players in this tournament. And I, I think it's say, extremely impressive. I called it out during our draft show that Monkey Dong 123 is the faker pick of the tournament. The guy was sleeper OP. I had faith in this dude from the start, just based on the name. I mean, look at that originality. Like, this guy is going places. Um, but going back to talking about the actual bot lane matchup, I definitely think that the ADCs are a lot closer than they would appear, um, especially because Pharaoh, uh, two, three years ago, was was a dedicated ADC main. Uh, you know, he first hit Diamond playing um, as a Lucian main. Wait, but so, I just want to say two, three years ago that. But, but the the, the, the like, skills are still there. They're latent, you know. Yeah, they've, yeah, they've been I, sleeping. Get, but... I, I know that Tony uh, Farrow <laughs> has the skills, and, and I know they're in there, like deep within him somewhere. But you know, Voidless has been on and practicing with Entropy back to back this entire for the entirety of these two weeks. I and honestly, if you've watched any of these um, matches for it's an eighth. The guy has been carrying the team. He's been putting them on his back on Kaiza. Like, he's really sharp. He's polished. He's hungry. He's ready to go. I, I just think that you got to give this It's an A bot lane the edge. Just based I, on, you know, like the regularity of practice. I do, I do think that you have to give them the edge in, in terms of the... The, the practice and also I think the um you know even though monkey dog 123 has been performing far above expectations you still you still have to give the edge to to entropy here so I think that that is where more of the advantage is coming from between that support difference and the amount of practice that the laners have with each other but between the actual ADCs themselves and in terms of like their their kiting and, and team fighting, I, I think that Tony can can go toe to toe or, or that Pharaoh can go toe to toe with Voidless uh, in these games. So oh, I wouldn't yeah. be too Sorry. concerned about any like late game team fight diff between the ADCs. And sorry to interrupt, but we have great news. Uh, Captain Voidless is back and we should be able to get the game started shortly. Um, definitely, you know, good to see that he's in good health and that, you know, it wasn't we're all rooting for him, we're all cheering out. for him in these whatever times. Um, just looking at um, the ADC's match histories, you know, don't see that much ADC gameplay from them, you know, <laughs> so it's gonna be a very uh, it's gonna be an interesting uh, thing to watch. I mean, it's and... 2021. Who who chooses to play ADC? <laughs> Whoa. Oh. I'll have you know, out of the four teams that made it through, um, three three of the four teams that made it to the semifinals have captains uh, captains who play the ADC role. And um, all of them have drafted really high ADCs um, or are the ADC players, players themselves. So I think it actually might be an ADC meta, at least in this tournament. And we have a second update. Um, we we got word that Mike Muted has chosen blue side. Um, so we will have Mike Muted on blue side, and it's an eighth on red side for this match. First match. I think this is a very a big thing to talk about, too, because SKT, otherwise known as Mike's Muted, plays with their Mike's Muted. So kind of curious how they're going to be able to play in this best of three with just pings and question marks and... Um, having their mics muted you know probably they're not gonna have their mics muted but you know yeah, curious about that on the other end of the spectrum we know that captain voidless in particular is very 
very great at leading his team. There's a lot of team communication inside it. They have a lot of vocal players between Ninja Buddy L9, Voidless, and Entropy. Um, and I would say the first match of this best of three series is very crucial. Oh, we have some very, team. very tilty people I can think of. Across both <clears throat> teams. Across so, both teams. So and team morale is essential for this match. Especially for this first match. You know, if you can crush the other team in just a very, very fast fashion in this first match, it might be strong enough just to tilt the other teammates. You know, so mentality is huge right now. So watching so, some I, players and their performance in this first match. I mean, I, I would I would say that I, I don't think that uh, Mike's muted has that week of a mental. I, I think that they'll be fine even if they take a loss. They can They can come back. Okay, so right, T-Max. Uh, trusting in the strong uh, mental for Mike's Muted. Um, I just want to ask you guys, do you think there's going to be any, con as we head into the pick and ban phase, are you expecting any contested picks between these two teams? Uh, I know Nelson already mentioned Cardinals Cassadin, which SK Telecom Team 1 is also famous for. Are there any other big picks to look out for for these? Listen, all I'm saying is the big the big money maker picks for whoever wins it for the teams that won um yesterday was Orange, Seraphine, and Leona. You know, those yeah. three picks, those easy picks because just grouping up as five in team fighting, super crucial. Garen with Ignite, Garen with Ghost, or Darius with Ghost, uh, top laners without uh T P um were really struggling. Honestly, and it's not even that's even knowing when to use your t teleport. So the top lane pick is very, very crucial. Um, and the support pick is also very crucial as well, I would say, for these uh, for when teams start contesting dragon number three, dragon number two, you know, um, that's when even dragon number four, because some teams basically just forget that, oh, shoot, the team has three dragons or two dragons already, and then they get into that um, fourth dragon fight for soul. And boom, you know, whoever has a Seraphine Orn, just wombo combos, basically. Just the wombo combos win. So that's all I have to say. Yeah, Nelson brings up a great point. Um, we do see the pri bot lane priority being very crucial for securing those dragons, which means bot the bot lane duo pick is essential. And we're expecting entropy on these Leonas, on these Nautilus picks. Um, which will really punish, which we might really punish, uh, Monkey Dong's more Enchanter picks, such as um, Seraphine, Yumi, and Soraka. So we, you know, we will have to see if it's an if can get an advantage through their more aggressive choices. Mm. I will have to say though, um, it is going to be. I'm very excited to see this draft. Honestly, I'm very excited to see which picks are con going to be contested and taken. Um, I'm expecting the Kaisen Jin to be chosen as ADC. Maybe the Samira, because Voidless has, is known for playing a Samira and a Lucian. Um, I'm very excited to see who, who does that. And basically, I'm expecting a lot of CC coming from SKT, really. I feel like their top lane uh, for Team... Excuse me, what was it? Uh, Mike's Mike Muted. Muted. Yep, Green Epic. Yeah, Green Epic. Yeah, I feel like the games we watched with Mike's Muted, uh, the mid lane choice made sense, the jungle choice made sense, and the bot lane choice made sense. It's just the top lane has always been a question mark, basically. We're always curious about are we going to get the Alawi, are we going to get the Darius, are we going to get the Garen? And I feel like um, what other players, or even the, what's it called, the uh, guest casters have been saying was, just put them on tank, honestly. You know, they need CC. They need the extra oomph. They need that TP for these team fights, basically. And I think another crucial thing that's not less talked about, and of course, uh, Anna, you can talk about this more, is the the ward vision, the vision wars, basically. A lot of times, you have to be very cognizant and look at the mini map, and you see a lot of these teams aren't warding properly. They don't buy pink wards. You look into the inventories, and it seems like they just left the, the support role for the they left the vision game for the support not anyone else so it's everyone's job to buy pink wars and vision and the clear vision so 
Okay, and with all that insight, we are now going to move on to the picks and bans, where these teams are duking it out. So already we see a Shen, Leona, and Nautilus ban coming out from Mike's Muted targeting Marcus's pool, um, as we had warned about. And I like these picks. I like these bands right here. Shen oh, yeah. for this Great global bands. pressure. Leona for the bot lane presence in Nautilus. They do not want this bot lane to pop off. And looking at the TFT's bands, Hecarim makes sense because of the strong jungle presence. Yumi just to control the bot lane because they want to win. And Seraphine because of the strong team fight presence. So we got a first pick Cho'Gath on SKT, and they're just giving that to Green Epic. Thoughts on that? I mean, this is this is exactly what uh, we were saying we expected to see from Green Epic. They were going to put him on a, a low ego top laner. He's going to contribute like CC and be able to make space for his team. And that's the role that they've decided he has to play. And Cho'Gath is a great champion with which to play it. I find Cho'Gath's uh, AoE silence to be super crucial. I think what separates a good Cho'Gath from a great Cho'Gath is knowing when to use that silence. Um, just if you understand understand the other champions, like rotations, not rotations, but their combos and their abilities. Um, I've noticed that in my ranked games that a really good Cho'Gath silence is what separates really good Cho'Gath players and can help swing a team fight instantly. Yeah, and, and Cho'Gath notably is super good into other tanks, uh, mm. especially. And uh, looking at the games yesterday, you have to expect that JTB is, there it is, locking in the There's orn. There's orn, yeah. So, so the orn you... matchup is very good for Cho'Gath, I'm guessing. Yeah, it's very good for Cho'Gath, and even blind picking, first pick blind picking a top laner, they've managed to secure a, a good lane matchup, at least. Mm, interesting. So the uh, TFT choosing the Orn, uh, it's a very good pick, honestly, for what um, they're trying to do. I like it, you know, oh, and then here comes the Kai'Sa to follow up. Kai'Sa. I would say this is a very good pick to choose. Honestly, Kaisa has been S tier in this current patch, and they lock in the Kaisa. So we have an Orin, uh first pick, Orin Kaisa to follow and up. Kaisa on Voiless is going to be crucial. Uh, we know that Kaisa is a premier pick for Voidless, and he's definitely shown that he can carry on that champion. So what I'm expecting right now is SKT to choose their bot lane into um into tft right here right and i'm expecting both the adc and support duo before um it's an eighth gets another chance to squeeze monkey dong's champ pool i mean at this point i can only imagine soraka coming out from team um mike's muted but we'll have to see We'll just see what they're trying to play here. They're playing the Senna. Oh, I'm excited to see a Kraken Slayer Senna. Or it could be a flex into support. But I'm expecting that to be an ADC Senna. And finally, who is going to join the Senna in the bot lane? That is the question. The last time that teams, uh, Team Mike's Muted played the Senna, it was the Fasting Senna. Um, really? Which they played. They oh, wow. they yeah. let um, Monkey Dong 123 take farm on Seraphine. And part of that uh, ended up leading to them having a massive CS difference bot lane. But they, mm. I mean, they still won that game. So I, I would expect to see them have Senna uh, be a fasting Senna and for them to pick a, a farming champ to go along with it. I'm curious who they'll choose in the next nine, eight seconds uh, for their support to farm. is also familiar with Lulu. Um, Lulu, not and the Braum. Oh, okay, so they're wow. using the Braum as a counterpick to, for Orn right here for the Orn ultimates, but Braum has to be very cognizant and know when to use his uh, wall, his E to block the and Orn ultimate. Braum definitely does not look like a farming champ. No, it like, does not. So I'm guessing yeah, a that, Kraken Slayer that is probably going to be the, the Kraken Slayer against Senna. Yeah. Senna we're getting into. And then finally, the last pick, Lulu. So they're really putting all their chips into Voidless right here. Um, I wouldn't say all their chips into Voidless, but with a Lulu on top of an Orn, uh, Kaisa is going to basically have free reign 
no. in these team fights and positioning wise too. We don't count those chickens quite yet, but because we do have Minge Betty in the jungle, and Minge Betty does prefer playing carry jungle picks, such That's as true. as we saw in the games last night, Master Yi, Kha'Zix. Um, yes. This guy will play aggressive jungle champs that love to scale to the late game and carry himself. So we might, it might not be a. Uh, and I'd I'd love to see a Master Yi ban here from Mike's muted. I think that the champion does a lot of things that other champions can't really replicate. Like you said, has the ability to to one v five and. If you know that you're playing on a team that has a wide range of skill, you should just get rid of the Master Yi. Because I if Master so Yi is able to prey on someone, he can really get out of hand. And I feel like um, just looking at this comp right here, a Master Yi into Senna, Brahmin, Cho'Gath is not, is not pretty. Yeah, it's, it's super free. Brahm's ultimate... Master Yi can just sprint right over that ice, puts on his skates, and isn't slowed by anything that the, the Braum is doing. Doesn't really care about being silenced by the Cho'Gath. So I and we're do not want to see it. And we targeted toward, those, toward the mid lane. We see a Diana ban coming from Mike's Muted and an Anivia ban coming out from um, It's an Ave. Really pinching that pool, uh, as we had talked about before, Captain SK Pelicon T1 and, uh, is ver versing Cardinal. These are two very aggressive mid lane players, um, both of them favoring assassins typically. Um, so we're super interested to see how... And that play. Lucian ban basically tells me that this guy, Cardinal, wants to play his Kassin. Uh Lucian to Kassin is not a good matchup at all for Kassin. But Kassin, if Kassin's able to survive the laning phase, he can kill the Lucian at level 7. Um, it's kind of a little, little of an annoying little, little tidbit right there. But um, this Lucian pick tells me that he doesn't want to play against the mid Lucian, and he's looking for this Kassin pick, Cardinal's premier Kassin pick. So let's see who what, um, what their final ban will be. Uh, any thoughts? Will it be the Master Yi? Will it be... And it's of the Kassadin, quite possibly. Yep, there's the Kassadin. It's the Kassadin, so... Just as I said. I mean, you had to do it, basically. It just... That, that draft basically screamed he wanted to choose Kassadin. And there's the Master Yi. And is that yeah. actually the Master Yi coming I, out? I think the Yi ban would have been much better than the Kassadin ban. I think the Kassadin ban... You know, you, you get left with a super late-game team. And that that opens up avenues for the. I see this master Mike's pick. It, it tells me master wants a farm. As we saw yesterday when TFT played, Minch Bay plays a farm in Messi. He just keeps clearing his jungle. He just wants his mythic item. He wants Ginsu's. Uh, he looks for ganks of opportunity in top lane. Okay, what does that tell me? I would need to play something aggressive. I need to play something that just applies pressure throughout the entire map uh, to not allow this master to farm. And boom, the Ramus pick right there. Wow. That is a very, very good counter into the Master Yi. And then we get a Victor pick, which is honestly, I think, is a good blind pick into Cardinal's champion pool. I think Victor's a solid pick into this comp right here. Very good zone. And I like it because of the fact that what are you supposed to do when Victor throws out his W, honestly? You know? In these fights, in these chokeholds. Because Master um, you can just jump on you, right? But then you throw the W down. And, and yeah. he walks out of it. He I could, yeah. don't know. I, I don't think that Victor's W is particularly effective against Master Yi since Master Yi ignores the slows. I think it's um, um, more intended as a follow-up CC tool. Uh, like, we're hoping mm. for a Braum passive clipping and stun. We're hoping for the Ramus. And taunt. then we have the Zerath. The um, yeah, the the most reliable CC coming up from Mike's muted is definitely the Braum passive and the um and the Ramus taunt. Those are the tools that you really need to land onto the Master E in order to uh, shut him down in these fights. But 
they are very good tools at, at doing that. So, so if I'm looking you, at you this need to right see now, a, a Mikhail's come out, honestly, pretty early. Yes, you do. And I think Lulu, the Lulu Messi combo is really, really strong, honestly. I put I think it puts a lot of onus on um, TFT to the Lulu and the Orn to not fall behind. Uh, the Lulu's job is basically to W the Master Yi or just W anyone. The Ramus, for example, if they try to gum the Kaisa. And um, the Orange's job is to be the beefy front line. Like, this one cannot fall behind. And I think one of the problems looking at this is um, Green Epic needs to understand not to push his wave in. I feel that, um, I think I saw, I, yeah, it was Green Epic, for example. He's the one who likes to play super pushed in, which is fine. And Cho'Gath naturally allows that with his Warpool spikes. But you need, it's all about setting this top lane behind, I think, in this game. Um, yeah. Looking at the individual lane matchups, I think bot lane, I don't know, I think the edge might be for the Kaisa Lulu. Uh, I think Braum can't really do anything to the, to the Lulu, uh, harassing, being as a lane bully. Uh, looking okay, at mid lane. So, guys... Stepping back for just a second, overall, who do you think won in the picks and bans, and who do you predict to win this first match between Mike's Muted and It's an Ape? Uh, I definitely think that It's an Ape won the won the draft, and I'd, I'd predict them to win. But I would say that even though I'm quite confident that their draft is better, I don't think it's much better. And I think that Mike's Muted definitely has the tools that they need in order to win the game. So, See, uh, yeah. I disagree with you on that. I think Mike's Muted has the better draft. I think that uh, it's an eighth is looking just to farm up and play passive in their laning phases, while it's an eighth is looking for just like the, with the Ramus ganks, and they have better follow up CC. Like, I, like we saw yesterday. It's super easy to follow up a Braum, like just the CC chains basically, Braum ult into Victor W or into uh, Senna Roots, into Shogath Silence or Rupture, and looking at that Ramus making plays. Um, I feel that SKT is looking just straight for picks, while uh, It's an Eighth is just looking for farming basically to farm up. They're going to give a couple dragons away, I believe. And then just look for opportunity, basically. They're making, I think it's an eighth is looking for Mike's Muted to mess up. So I, that's my prediction. I, I think Mike's Muted has a lot of opportunities to make things happen in the laning phase. But once you get past that stage of the game and you're more into the mid and late game, it just seems very awkward to me for them to try to be looking for picks because. Their main tool to get picks, Ramus, has to go so far away from the rest of his team. You know, the other four members of the team really want people to be running into them, but then Ramus has to kind of go and chase people down. It seems like there's there's sort of like a, a mismatch there to me. Mm, and so I'm I'm worried that we're gonna see like this Ramus go really far to like chase down a, a Kaisa Zareth or Yi, and then be hung out to dry because his team can't follow up. Whereas on the other side, we have, you know, Orn can engage from range and Kaisa and Yi can like run in with, uh, you know, Lulu shields on them. And then Zareth can just sit back and, and follow up from a screen away. So it, it seems like the, when we're talking about the ease of execution, you know, even if Mike's muted has uh, an, an advantage in the lanes, I think they really need to use that advantage whereas on the other side the the scaling farming team is just very very easy to execute they just need to not fall behind too much and i feel like mike's uh-huh do the late game yeah i feel like mike's muted so it's an eighth their team comp. If you look at their team comp right who's their engage basically their engage is orn and the one that can mm -hmm. provide poke is zara so it's pretty balanced you know they have engaged they need orn to engage and need zara to poke them out around objectives right Mm -hmm. While, but Master Yi, the thing about Master Yi is that Master Yi is never going to try to engage. If uh, Mike's Mute is clumped together in a five stack, uh, mm -hmm. it's going to zone out the Kaisa and the Master Yi. They do not want to go anywhere near the Ramus. They don't want to go anywhere near the, the Cho'Gath, for example. 
and mm -hmm. it's it's um if skt if mike's community gets ahead and they dictate they they get to the dragons first they get to the barons first uh it's very hard for it's an eighth to push them back in my yeah. opinion that's it's very very is, hard that is true you, you essentially would be relying on only the Zareth, and the Zareth just doesn't have the damage to push back of Brom, yes. so Ramus, especially with Senna healing them. So I, I, I definitely agree with that. So, but, but we'll, again, we'll see how the, the how the execution turns out. Yeah. So now we're moving into um. All right, now they're choosing their champions right now. So we'll go live soon in one bit. I'm going live right now. So we're seeing that them pick their champions right now. Okay, um, I am actually a little worried in particular about twice on Ramus. Um, so the one game that my team's Mike muted actually did lose was against you know, the Bongo Cats. Um, when twice was on Ramus, there was an issue where there was a bit of mismatch between the initiation and the follow-up. So I'm, I am a bit concerned about how this will turn up. Hopefully after, um, I know that the team, Mike's Muted, did get a chance after the game to do a quick VOD review, talk about what happened in that game. So um, hopefully they've fixed that and they're better prepared for today's match. Yeah, I agree. Um, yeah, it all depends on, I feel like you just have to keep track of the jungler right now too. Um, Master, we just know Master Yus is going to try to farm, and he's looking for ganks of opportunity. I think he's going to do a, a simple path from blue side to red side, just keep going up the map, depending where he starts. And it's onus on, I think, the individual laners to not to overextend. I feel like Zareth is going to poke, or I think the early game between 1 through 6, Zareth is going to have a little bit more control than Victor in the laning phase. If Zareth can land those skill shots, land those Qs onto the Zareth and poke them out. So you might play more behind. But I'm really curious how the top lane is going to be played out. If Cho'Gath plays more aggressive, like which top lane is going to play more aggressive into the other player and push the wave in. Uh, I think wave management is super crucial for top lane right now. And that, that's the thing to watch. Uh, for bot lane, I don't expect much to happen from bot lane. I think it's more on void list to make something happen than the Senna and Braum. And Senna and Braum are just waiting for the Rams to gank them. So I think in the 2v2, it, Kaisen and Lulu can maybe win it. But Senna and the Braum are just waiting for the Rams gank. So yeah, I'm kind of, I'm really excited to, uh, to yeah. see do um, this. Nelson, I'm right there with you. The, the one lane I am a little bit concerned about is the mid lane. Um, we we know Cardinal best for his Zed, for his Rivens, but for his Cassidy, very aggressive uh, mid laners. But and, and on the other hand, SK Telecom Team One is on his comfort pick. He is on his signature Victor. So this might be a little bit of a mismatch. We'll have to see how Cardinal, how well Cardinal knows that Seraph. Um, but as we are waiting for the spectator delay, I want to just drop a quick message from our title sponsors, DropPod. DropPod is a Williams alumni-founded social media and gaming startup centered around making it easier to connect with friends to play online multiplayer games. One part gaming community and one part social media app, DropPod just launched and is in open beta. DropPod hopes that the Williams network will be a major part of its community, so please go check them out in the Apple App Store and Google Play Stores. Okay, and now we're back. Do you guys have any predictions on level one invade strats by any of these teams? I mean, come on. I, I just, I need to see something, some cheese. I need to see something spicy. 
and I need to see some level one shenanigans. I do not want to see a normal five stack. I want to see something very, very mwah, just to say the least. Uh, you have you have Senna, you have Braum. These are really good champions. Choyak also. Yeah. From Mike's yeah. muted, a Ramis very for that like insane. Oh, uh, well, I don't think Ramis really wants to. Ramis not going to start taunt, long. but you have but, Braum. He doesn't want to the... start that taunt, but he could. He's he could. a great sinking. Like, Braum yeah. obviously has the best level one, one of the best level ones in so, this game. Like I want to on. see it. I uh, want to see it. Will too. Will we actually see it? I don't know, but I I certainly want to see it. And now we're getting into the rift. Now we're getting into the rift, seeing, uh, and we have a pause on the screen right now. Looking at the summoner spells, I'm excited right now. All teams, all the top laners took TP, and the mid laners took TP, so I expect some spicy stuff to happen in bot lane or across this map. Uh, we really have to watch out who uses teleport. Looking at the, um, it's an eighths team right now the kaisa took cleanse and the lulu took heal so do i expect more of a lane bully happening from kaisa and lulu not really um i do agree with the cleanse um voidless is just number one job as an adc as def would say is to survive number one and then do damage you know once you survive yeah. you can do enough damage so and i'd like to cleanse ramus um, just cries when he sees that cleanse yeah um, so, I think he's hoping hand, the Braum will proc it first, proc the stun, but I think Voidless will have more sense to use the cleanse. Uh, looking at the keystones, everything seems standard. Uh, see the press attack on Voidless, so and just usually you see Hail of Blades, but that's fine. I think press attack will be good. Um, Pharaoh took Glacial Augment, um, which is standard. I would say you can take three different keystones on Senna, so I would say that's pretty standard. And the phase rush coming from Victor. And the Arcane Comet, Carnal wants to do the poke from Zareth, so. Yep, and then top laners took grass, so you're going to see a lot of trades to get those grass procs in top lane. So, I'm top lane looks like it's going to be a nice little tank slap fest, so, yeah. Guys, I will say, I am a bit surprised that Monkey Dong chose to go for the exhaust for this lane, while Senna and, uh, Kai and sorry, while Kaiza and Lulu, you know, do deal out some poke. They're not as much of an all-in kind of champ. So I thought I was expecting like an Ignite coming out from um, Mike's muted spot lane. Try to follow up on that Braum stun to convert to a kill. But um, I think they they rather just take it slow. They look like they want to farm until the late game. Probably save that exhaust for that mastery. Yes. In fights. That's what I think. That's what Braum realized. I don't think they realize they're going to win the laning phase anytime soon against the Kaisa and Lulu. And I, I honestly like the exhaust pickup into the Master Yi. Um, Braum's job is basically to uh, exhaust either Kai, primarily ninety five percent of the time Master Yi or the Kaisa. But he's oh, looking and, to exhaust the Master Yi. And and again, this exciting start is. as Mike's muted looks like they're <gasps> going for an invade. Does Cardinal want to go for the close? W? Oh, oh, Braum show. Braum showed, though. And I think the they pings come went through. Back to their jungle, spreading along. Yeah, at this see, point, they have to go and spread back out. And I would love to see that Lulu or Kaisa step up because you, you've seen. Right. Since Blue you've team, seen all five on the you top, you can side. go and, and grab that cheeky ward. We See, Madre, Madre the Flame likes to talk about, you know, Madre likes to talk about how level ones are disrespectful or uh, <laughs> level ones are just unethical. But take skill, honestly. This level ones take skill. And you saw right there, Monkey Dong walks out of the bush, gets spotted, you know? Um, it just is the communication, honestly. There is skill to these level ones. So. No. At the distance that Cardinal was standing, it would have been very hard for Mike's Muted to transition that into a kill unless they were willing to expend multiple oh, flashes. But you gotta try. You gotta just throw that center root, make yep. sure that he's paying attention, that he has his monitor turned on. Yep. Uh, we get some little trades happening right now. Um, I don't agree with Cardinal. So one of the things you have to realize as a mid laner, and you learn this as a basic... It's like basic 101. You never want to farm with abilities uh, in mid lane. You always want to trade, use your abilities 
onto the enemy mid laner and use your auto attacks to farm. It sounds pretty basic enough, but you see a lot of low elo players using their abilities to um, get the farm. Now with Kai'Sa, it's fine because Kai'Sa has to be execute basically on the minions, but um, I think you can look at the health bars right here. Um, I think, yeah, I think Victor is, uh, has a little bit of it. Yeah, he has the edge right now on Cardinal because he's using his E to harass the Zareth. Well, Zareth is using his Q to get the minions. So looking at the bot lane right now, um, I expect this to happen. Kaisa is pushing in the the Senna Brom right now. You can't really even walk up even close to that wave without Lulu trying to harass you and get those stacks. She took the Spell Thief's, uh, was it Knife or something? Spell Thief's Edge. Spell Thief's yeah. Edge, there and it is. Getting, yeah. getting the full crash into the turret, we're seeing a Cheetah Recall come out for it's an 8th spot lane. And really I'm like this. Curious, yeah, really yeah with nice. three waves, they're going to be able to pick up like a, a call. Oh, yeah, yeah a call. I really like this right here. Voidless committing committing to that farm that, plan. Yeah, Re Voidless recognizing that um, since Mike's Muted is not intending to play this lane aggressively, that he might as well take that for... Um, you know, take full advantage of the situation. He decides to. I'm only watching jungle right now because they were going to see a skull of crab. Oh, Here's the station. Ramus goes in with the power. Ramus going to be able to get to the master Yi. There's oh, but onto the Yi, but the Yi's just going to flash out. Flash. Oh, yeah. There's the taunt. Oh, but he gets stunned. Oh and my! The silence <laughs> is what prevents him from being able to flash out of that Victor W and. First blood goes over to. Uh, it's disrespectful right there on Minch Betty. He should have just flashed immediately. Um, he, I don't think he realized that there was no Victor reason was... to channel the uh, to channel the me meditate. Not at all. Not yeah. at all. Um, I think he was expecting his teammates to follow up, but um, Victor had priority over Zareth at the moment because he was out trading him. And, and that's the Chogat... con convert yep. on the fundamentals that you were talking about earlier. And Yep, and that's how good the Cho'Gath silence was. Uh, I think Minch Betty was probably spamming Flash, but he was silenced by the Cho'Gath. And then Victor followed up with a W, stunning him, and then they got an easy kill. Uh, Victor has enough bursts just to help get that kill and give it to Cho'Gath, you know? So now, good uh, good fundamentals coming from... Uh, uh, yeah. Mike's muted, yeah. yeah. And Green Epic with double buffs might be giving JTB a harder time up in this lane. And look at this right here. He's just keeping the wave right there. I, I like this coming from Green Epic. And then Minch Betty's going for oh, the steal. And right a, there. a cheeky Betty Raptor steal, but the, no the, the Ramus is going to be able to catch up. The power ball comes out, and are we going to see a repeat he flashing flash right on? But he flashes when he's out, it, so he has to walk backwards. And we're not going to see anything no. else. So uh, a simple flash trade traded. From, the, from the junglers. And SK, uh, SK Telecom T1 has to back right now because he has no mana. But interesting right now. Flashes shade for both junglers. You know, but super close game overall. I think it's an absolute nail biter and an exciting start. We already had some early fights for that first scuttle grab. Um, are are we going to see any of these teams try to contest to secure that first dragon? I want to say it's going to be. Um, it's an eighth probably clamoring for that first ocean drake as their bot lane typically has a slight advantage. Um, what do you guys think or predict? Well, on the other side of the dragon pit, we are seeing a huge advantage in the pressure generated by the victor compared to the Zareth. Oh, but there's a stun onto the Zareth and caster curse. I was talking about that advantage, but uh, a good trade from Cardinal onto the victor Puts him a little bit behind in HP, chugging up those potions to try to get it back. Yeah, um, but if I'm Victor right now, I'm seeing that Cardinal has no mana, so that's why he's yeah. pressing him in mm -hmm. as fast as possible. He wants to deny him as much farm as possible because he realizes Cardinal can't trade him back. Uh, on the bottom side, the blue team is definitely behind in pressure. Pharaoh sitting at about half HP after getting chugged out by the Void Seekers and the Lulu Harass. So Ten souls on center. Either team could make an argument for trying to contest for this dragon. I would expect that the early game of blue team is stronger than that of the the red team, and they have they have more CC and more uh, 
more early game damage. So I I want to see them make a play for the dragon and uh, deny the the greedy farming team uh, the ability to get an early advantage. And I think that's what you're seeing right now. It looks like they might be going for a play around dragon. The Lulu's run with the Master Yi. Uh, are they looking for this victor? Uh oh, oh no, they're just going for the scuttle. And back in. I'm actually really impressed with this uh, Ramus right now. Um, well, he was keeping in track with the farm with Master Yi. Do you think this gold lead will basically continue for the Master Yi? Uh, I would definitely expect the gold lead, or at least the farm lead, to grow for the Master Yi. Uh, the champion scale like buys damage items where Ramus is not buying damage items. So as the game goes on, he's going to be able to clear faster and faster. Uh, but the the onus is definitely on the Ramus to get the jungle matchup away from both of them just sitting and clearing uh, and be the one to make the practice plays. But Vincent here we see Master Yi one. going for the, the dragon. It looks like it's being started. Yep, pulling it out. And blue team has no idea. There, there are some pings, though, and Victor's is coming down. Around. And the there is a teleport. Victory, oh, I might be caught. Easy taunt, and he's just dead. Yep. And now the five men, everyone shows up, everyone is here, and an easy chomp by the Cho'Gath, no chance for a steal. Very oh, Ram is going in, chasing out. after the Xerath. Just barely, Xerath gets away. Yeah, very good fundamentals right there come from blue team. That ward in the back of the bush, um... Really punishing the Master Yi for not having Red Trinket. If Master Yi had Red Trinket, uh, he would have spotted that uh, ward on Dragon and killed it. But because he did not take Red Trinket, it really it, it just turned it, the whole play around. With yeah, the as, as a jungler in. who has made that play dozens of times, let me tell you, it always works better <laughs> when you have the Red Trinket. Yeah. Oh, the cancel on the dash from the uh, oh. Cho'Gath knockup forces a flash from the Orn. And a now Ramus. a second knockup comes out, and the Ramus is able to follow up. Unstoppable doesn't block any CC, and Orn is going to fall, uh, blows Get his flash, Ramus. and Cho'Gath, the blue team, they didn't expend any summoners. What a what a great play from uh, Mike's Muted. I mean, it just seems like the Orn overstayed his welcome right there. Mm -hmm. yeah. We're seeing some great roams from twice overall. He's been at the right place at, at the right time for all of these plays. Really stepping up on the Ramus pick today. Really TP punishing. comes out uh, for the Orn, so now he's left with no sums, uh, no pressure on the rest of the map. And we'll have to see how the blue team can exploit that. Wow. Very good. Oh, oh. Seen the Master he's spotted, though, by the sword. Master he comes in for a gank, but I don't think there's anything to be found here. Mm. Though, I don't think that Orn TP will be too punishing, as Green Epic did use that teleport to go down to that dragon fight. So, both teams are aware that the top laners, um, like, neither top laner has TP. So, Ben, oh, a little bit of trading happening right here. What do you think of these CS differences right now in the lanes? Um... I think that this is about what you would expect. The matchups which are on paper winning are up about 10 CS. Mid lane, it's it's about even. You know, top lane, Cho'Gath is up. Bot lane, Kai'Sa is a little bit up. And then obviously the Master Yi has been spending more time in his forest, so he's going to have uh, more CS. A very, very much at expectation. Had expectations indeed as we're going to enter back into another relaxed state in the game. Everyone's going back in oh, the lane. Ram is going in another power ball. Bot lane bot. gets right in onto the Kaisa. Kaisa ults away, but it isn't enough to get away from the taunt. Cleanse Cleanse flash used. used. Flash from the support as Whoa. well, but the damage is there, and you can't flash away from uh, Senna's range as she picks up that kill. Twice is crazy this game, honestly. The fact that he's literally. He's doing exactly what we said in the beginning of this draft. He is making plays throughout the entire map. This man is has a hundred percent kill participation in every single uh, in this whole entire game and helps every single lane, mid, top, and bot. 
Very I excellent. I have to say, I, I definitely doubted at the beginning. I thought that it would be difficult for him to uh, execute on the opportunities that were presented in the lane, but he's done a great job. And now the Ornhorn being sounded misses the Cho'Gath, but the Yi is getting between Cho and his tower. The Watch the Victor, though. Be, oh, a TP coming in from the Victor. Can the Cho'Gath stall long enough? Flashes into his teammate, and Master Yi flashes in place. Yi ha oh! And uh, just gets oh, picked up. Carnal. Fancy the Zareth alts all miss, and Orn is just going in to try to pick it up, but he doesn't get it. Just barely getting away from the <laughs> green and the plays it there amazingly well. Oh, oh my, my god. god! Green epic right here is really putting on his like car or his. This is the silver smurfer indeed. Like he is showing up very very well in this top lane. Able to call in the victor to teleport in and literally Rad dodging that gank. Going in, just you know, faking out at the Zareth, just trying to scare him off the CS. But man, yeah, that last play was done so beautifully by Green Epic, uh, flashing towards his teammates' teleport, like showing a really good, um, like evaluation of the threat that was. On, placed on his lane and, and how he could and, avoid it. And we're seeing the disrespect a little bit given by Minge Betty to the other teammates because Minge Betty used, the Master Yi used Alpha Strike onto the Cho'Gath and then Cho'Gath flashed to the Victor. So Victor had all his spells up. He had his Q up, he had his W up, he had his E up, and he had his R up. But then Master Yi, instead of just running away, there was a chance where both they could just let the play off and ran away. But Master Yi's like, no, I want to kill this guy. And without any abilities, he just got bursted by Victor. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they were probably saying that the Zareth could follow up with ult, but you know, Zareth ult only does damage if you can uh, land the land the shots. So now we're seeing some mythic items come through. Got the mythic item on Ramus, the mythic item on Senna, and Cho'Gath. And if we thought this Ramus was fast, oh, uh, we've seen nothing yet. <laughs> With Turbo Chem Tank, this guy is gonna zoom across the map, coming from downtown, catching you un. Second Dragon started up on the ward. We'll see if there's any response from Red Team. I think they're just no gonna one, let this go. No one on Blue Team has Red Trinket right now. <laughs> <laughs> I just find that a little comical. But look at the Dragon. And Minfrey is looking to gank top, but sees not so Swapping, swapping trinkets is hard. Still yeah. doesn't have Red Trinket, so he. He's just going to walk through another ward. They'll probably have to keep farming. It's just the little things, really, we have to look at. You know, after you do a VOD review, it's just, you know, get get a red drinker as a jungler or as support when your uh, support item is finished. It's just the little things. Or even have a pink ward, you know? And I like Green Epic. He has a pink ward. You know, I like it a lot. Elbow oh, here's the Ram coming in. Coming oh, comes in. Comes There's another too. flash. There's the taunt. Ornhorn coming out, but... Silence, Silence, not able to to use the second part of the Orn ultimate, and let's see, Master Yi beautifully dodges the Cho'Gath cube, but it doesn't matter, he just gets taunted up afterwards and bursts it down. Oh, Twice is just playing out of his mind this game. Twice and Green Epic are just playing very, very let's good. Let's not forget, SK Telecom Team 1, I mean, he's using his spells, forcing the minion wave onto Zeref so he can't follow up. And he's yeah. just roaming everywhere. He's, he's always there. He's at every he's play. There, yeah. And Zareth's never, like, nowhere to be found. Yeah, and Zareth has TP too. Like, one of the things Zareth should have used was use TP in top lane. Just just TP, honestly. Just TP and help your teammates out. It would have been entirely different if Zareth was there making a 3 for 2 fight, you know? Mm -hmm. But it's just the little things. It's just little things. Not using teleport, victory gang, the roam before the Zareth does. Also, we see a, a Rift Herald being taken up right now by Blue Team. We'll have to see what they do with that. And this is the problem with the Master Yi gank, or Master Yi pick right here we're watching. Because of the mm -hmm. fact that Rambus is, has 6 out of 8 kill participation, they're making so many plays across this map that it's forcing Master Yi, Master Yi to look for these ganks, look for things he, he doesn't want to look for, you know? Yeah. And uh, it, you can see the panic in Master Yi's eyes right now. Um, he's trying to get his, like trying to get ahead. He wants to be the snowball carry. But yeah, right now, and they they just need to play it cool. They just need to keep farming up, and get to that point where they they have those item completions. You know, where Master Yi has things like uh, 
I don't even know what master he builds. Rage Blade. The items that make him do ridiculous damage. Like once he has those, <laughs> then so, then they can start to look for actual team fights. And so I, I feel just like want to call oh. out that Green Epic used the Herald up in top lane, got himself the first turret goal. This Chogov is stacked. He's a, he is the top one percent. This man lives on Wall Street. Look at this <laughs> Chogov go. Yeah, three and a half thousand gold lead for the blue team, and we can see that uh, two thousand of, of that lead is, is that Choga. Yeah, I think the only way um, yeah, not it's only an ape is going to come back right now yeah. is the Kaisa, the Kaisa Lulu. Not only is this Choga huge, his wallet's huge too. This guy might, yeah, I I don't know if they can two v one him at this point. I, I would be surprised if they could. Yeah. We, uh... Yeah, it's it's an interesting... I think uh, it's an eighth. They're saving grace right now as the Kaisa Lulu. Um, I don't think Master Yi can even touch this Ramus or Cho'Gath with Bramble Vest right now. Mm -hmm. and it's it's going to be a long time before the Master Yi is relevant. And Zerath still needs, I would say, two items, two more items to be a little bit more relevant. He does have the um, Leandris to kill the tanks, but oh, watch out. No. Blue team, four man invade, just oh, going and making the enemy jungle their own. Easy pickup onto the Lulu, and now they're setting up for a dive. Nope, they're going back towards the Master E, but he's already out of there. And Oh, no, but he oh, turns and around and. That's enough time for the Ramus to chase after him, but a good stun from the Zareth prevents that engage from picking off his jungler. And this is why I'm saying how much damage the Zareth is doing. He landed every th three of his spells. He has a two level lead on this. Oh, but. Oh, and spell. Master Yi just goes all the way over to the other side of the map, tries to make a play, goes for the 2v1 that we were talking about, but once Here's again, the, the teleport comes from in from the Victor. Zareth is here this time, so it's going to be a 2v3. But it looks more like a 1v1 between the Cho'Gath and the Master Yi, forcing the Yi to flash away. And, and the Master team is Yi can't to, do to anything away. to the Cho'Gath. He can't do anything to the Cho'Gath. He's not there yet. The, the stats are just too big. And we're seeing the mid lane difference right now, with the Victor literally teleporting. And look at, where the, look at where the Ramus is. He knows what his job is this game. He's here to stack these dragons, get this early advantage, and snowball it into the late game. As soon as that dragon is spawned, he's on it, hitting it. Oh, incredible. Incredible performance right now by Mike's Muted. You know, for Isn't a team right? whose name implies that they don't have the best communication. Oh, the Senna <laughs> ult just barely missing the Lulu, but Voidless ults in. Look at this kind of low to flash. flash away immediately. Those are the desperate plays that you it's really don't want to be seeing from the from the red team. But at the same time, like, don't you rather than just going silently in the night? Oh, oh and and the Zareth picks off the Senna. Wow. wow. Cardinal, you know, showing that Zareth all actually does deal damage. Uh, you just gotta be the American sniper to hit the hit those marks um but as i was saying you know like as we're seeing it's an eighth attempt to crawl back this 3k gold difference i would rather see them try to make these proactive plays than just roll over silently and die yeah like the, the fact that they're attempting these even though they might not look very clean is better than just you know slowly letting uh, Mike's muted, push their advantage, you know, now, collect. Normally, I would absolutely agree with you. I've been known to throw my body away trying to... Oh, but here comes the Victor all in on the, the, the Yeah, the Victor going towards the Zareth gets away on the, the other Orin. side. Orn looks like he was way too pushed up, gets caught in a 1v3 and taken down by the Senna. But I going back to what we were saying earlier, I don't think that the red team should be forcing any plays because they scale so well and their champions are so bad until they get their items that they really just need to wait for these breakpoints before they can look for anything. Like but They still seeing... only have one item on most of their carries and it's just not enough for them to ever win any of these fights, which is exactly what we're seeing. 
but we're seeing the panic and mentality come through uh, mm -hmm. both sides right now, or not both sides, just the red team in general. They look, you look on the scoreboard, orange zero four zero, Messi zero four zero. You know, they feel like they're pressured to do something. They yeah. see the three dragons down, ten to one. You know. It's... Yeah, obviously, it's easy to say these things as a caster, but when you're in the game and you feel that pressure, of yes. course you're, you're gonna you're gonna try to uh, make those plays and and see what you can bring back, uh, especially yep. if if you are like uh, voidless uh, on as the as the captain, you know, feeling like he has to carry for his team. Indeed. So, I just want to bring up um, since we talked about the three dragons, it is going to be a mountain soul that's in up for contest shortly in two minutes um mountain soul is devastating as mike's muted has really really tanky front lines with braum i mean we saw that ramis and this unkillable chogoff mountain soul would be pretty much the death nail yeah once you team. once you get that shield from the mountain soul you might as well delete Zareth from the map like this poke champion isn't going to be able to do anything with the shields coming back up every few seconds from the blue team. Yeah. Um, I want to say, though, that I don't like this cookie cutter build coming from Master Yi. You need a Blade of the Rune King this game. Get going Ginsu's. Sure, you get the true damage proc twice, but these tanks are too fed. You need lifesteal in order to get through this Bramble Vest. Um, otherwise, you're just going to, every time you, you smack, uh, well, he, he has the life steal from from shield though. Oh, you're right. This I, I do. I, I do get what you mean. You, you need to be able to lose half his health from auto attacking the Ramus. Yep. Oh, and Victor flashes forward and, and Senna picks it off, snipes the Master Yi down, and Zareth trying to get something back with his uh, artillery isn't quite able to do so. And yeah, it's this game one's not looking pretty right now. They're going to set up for Dragon in the next one minute. Um, their blue team obviously will have priority on this Dragon. And who's going to engage for... Who's going to stop blue team from getting Dragon? You know, they have to send the Orn in, but Orn doesn't have that many items. And Orn went for the Frostfire Gauntlet. What do you guys think about that? Uh, I, I think it's a fine choice. Uh, I know that recently the Sunfire Aegis was nerfed compared to some of the other tank items and frostfire gauntlet is i believe cheaper than um the sunfire so that might be a reason to just go for the iceborne it seems fine mm. but i do think that you're right this next dragon fight is going to be possibly the straw that breaks the camel's back for uh, red team um, they really can't be giving up the mountain soul but at the same time they are going to need an absolute miracle in order to win this team fight and if anything like you just go for like a steal with with zareth alt or something so right now it's again, a choke off with <laughs> ult I mean... You're just hoping I've seen it happen. Our breaks. Oh, and, and Victor oh. leads it off with a, a pick onto the Lulu. Master Yi flashes and tries to go for the steal, but can't outsmite the Cho'Gath and just dies for free. Now, Ramus is chasing down the remaining stragglers. Zareth forced to flash away, but another powerball comes right on out, and he's going down as well. Three for zero, and Blue Team has their choice of the map. Looks like their choice is barren, and they're going to shamble on over and take it at their leisure. So Mike's I'm... muted, putting on a clinic. These guys have been so clean ever since that level 3 contest for that first scuttle. I mean, making really proactive plays, taking advantage of their lane pressures to invade and bully out Minge Betty L9 all throughout this game. These guys are doing a fantastic job showing up for this game one. I mean, I couldn't say it better myself, Anna. This has been a very clean performance right now by Mike's Muted. They, they're just mad. Their macro has been extraordinary this game. You know, showing the difference between the macro of their opponents right now. The TP usage, being at the right place in the right time, twice has been coming up huge in the jungle. 
you know, oh, yeah. really punishing I, this Master Yi. I was really worried about this Ramis pick initially, but twice proved me very wrong, and I am glad to say that this this guy is, you know, he's the Sonic of this map. He goes fast. And, and look at this Zareth, putting in so many abilities to try to knock these shields off of these members, and four seconds later, it just comes right back up. And can we just mention, mention right now that Senna has 61, over 61 stacks right now, and Cho'Gath has 9 stacks around 28 minute mark? That's insane. The yeah. Senna's doing so much damage to Cho'Gath, is so tanky. Um, oh, and Ram the Ram is just chasing down the Master Yi. Oh no. Master Yi is... makes it away using the ultimate, but man, being pushed off of every single ounce of gold that the Master Yi is trying to cobble together absolutely destroyed in the jungle here indeed when you see your master you running away from the ramus you know that the gold difference is not in the master you's favor whatsoever and mm -hmm. the, the, this ramus has too much presence on this map everyone's afraid of this ramus who's going to kill this ramus who's going to kill the chogath um it's, it's it's not good i mean if we take a look at the kaisa's build straight from the Kraken Slayer right into Lord Dominic's second item. You know, Voidless wow. knows that he's he's he knows that he's hitting tanks who have a ton of armor. And so he he decides to rush the Lord Dominic's, but don't really think it's gonna be enough. He needs the Lulu buffs on him. He needs the Lulu W, he needs the Lulu E shield on him just to do more damage, just to to work front to back. I think Master mm -hmm. Yu's job is just try to kill the Victor and the Senna, but it's just so hard dealing with the Ramus, dealing with the Cho'Gath, wow. and dealing with this Braum, this friend the Mountain Soul, you know? Mm -hmm. It's just, they're flexing yeah, their gold. If, if the Braum or the Ramus just click their CC on the Master Yi, you know, he's, this is this is what you are saying earlier, like, he has no space. The Ramus just walks right by the Lulu, doesn't care at all. Sees his target laser focused on the Master Yi, takes him out of the fight, and now chasing down, coming back for the Lulu, saying, You know, I didn't forget about you. Uh, and the Cho'Gath rupture, Braum alt lands, Lulu deleted off the map. And these plays are just beautiful, back to back, very well layered CC and precise target selection. I. You know, like, we, we are talking just about how clean these guys are. They're basically a Lysol ad. These guys are just <laughs> killing 99% of all bacteria and viruses. Like, they are just wiping then, this map. Then we get to see how... Completely ignoring. Oh, go ahead. No, I was just going to say, we get to see how easy Blue Comp's comp works. Mm -hmm. You know, it's just it's just easy CC, easy, yeah. like... Ramers go fast push his face on somebody, and then Cho'Gath follows up with a knock-up, and uh, everybody shoots their lasers and kills them. It's... Yep. Looks like the blue team isn't trying to end on this push. They're going to go ahead and wait for the next round of objectives, um, which, of course, will be Elder. Do we have the objective timer for when Elder is going to be spawning? It's got to be one minute. soon. One, one minute, minute right here. Yeah. yeah, they see that Elder and they see the Nexus, right? I mean, this it's this is disgusting. Look at Senna and Victor's. They have both have stopwatches. Like, and have Hex Drinkers, too. Or Senna has the Hex Drinker. Like, Senna has so many. 72 stacks. Scaling Victor has the Magi's right also. Oh, but watch oh, this and why oh. is Finding anybody yes, once again. Crap. Two level I, feel like, I feel like we've been here before. You he's know, chasing, Ramis he's as fast as the Master walks with after the oh, Master oh, with all. And Tony! Oh, oh my, my god. god. Pharaoh's, <gasps> Pharaoh's range <sighs> is so long after all these soul stacks that, you know, even if he's not fasting Senna, I, this guy has just collected souls like a Hoover. I, this is the build. This is I don't the know Kraken where Slayer. He found them. The Kraken Slayer against whose build is doing so much work, so much damage. But can we just say how fast Twice was chasing after a Master Yi and all? He wasn't. He wasn't using any of his abilities. He was just walking after the Master <laughs> Yi, and Master Yi couldn't get away. That's absurd. Wow, this is where you start saying jungle difference, and you see in the solo queue team chat like. Oh. 
Oh, so here's the, the desperation. Alt from the Orn hits the Cho'Gath and the Senna, but easy to kite back. And you can't imagine that with a gold difference this massive, the red team is going to be able to get anything. Senna Alt comes through, hits three members, and Victor is just walking up to the enemy fountain, throwing his spells down, forcing the members to flash even further back onto the fountain. And that uh, I really, one for I really love the shot calling from... Mike's mute. They've been focusing the Master Yi in 100% of all the fights. They always go for the Master Yi first, and then they focus on the, the rest. And no, that's I, it. Game 1 goes to Mike's muted. I'm right there with you, Nelson. I don't know who does the shot calling for Mike's muted, but they are doing a phenomenal job. If their mics truly are muted and they're just communicating with pigs, then they are fantastic at that, too. This team... I gotta, I gotta ask you guys, who do you think is the MVP for game one? Twice. What do you think, Ben? Twice. Yep. Unanimous. Yep. Instant. Unanimous. Yep. It's twice. It's just twice, honestly. Yeah. No, twice, you know, shrugging off the naysayers. This guy really, really showing what a high value pick he is. We'll have to see if Ramis will get through the picks and bans for like big game too because you know if i'm if i'm it's an eighth i might just ban that ramis i want to say give a shout out to green epic he just stepped up from yesterday i mean dodging that gang from master yi and the orn and, and turning getting, it around he just didn't dodge it he got the kill after he played so solid bought pink ward like he i just gotta give a shout out to green epic like but just twice his performance throughout the entire game was like, like I wish there was a second most valuable player, but just MVP goes to twice, of course. So, all right, then uh, what do you think will happen for game number two? Then, well, revisiting your earlier point about mentalities, we'll, we'll have to see if uh, team it's an eighth can keep it together and stop it from actually being an eighth. They lost the first round, and I'm I'm a little bit worried about what might be going through their heads. Oh, most definitely. Hopefully, it's an eighth. We'll pull it back together for game two. What do you think? Game. Um, what do you think they have to do to win? Turn it around to win game two, so that we can see that third game. For game two, I I think that they either need uh more pressure from their mid lane pick or more pressure from their jungle pick um they as we could see just weren't able to win any fights before the 15 minute mark and then once they hit that mark they were too far behind in gold so i i'd, I'd like to see them be just a little bit less greedy. I, I get the idea of these games tend to go into the late game and there tends to be a lot of room for people to farm up, but they just took the took the farming greed a, a little bit too far and they really paid for it. So in particular, who do you want to see on that early game aggressive champ to really you know, transition, help transition the rest of the team into the scaling comp. Who who do we want? Mm, I, do want something I, I would want to see Cardinal on a pick that he's more familiar with. I, I know that in that last game, it would be kind of iffy to give him the Zed because they would have had a very heavy... AD uh, comp into a Ramis. Yeah. And Zed isn't great into the tanks. But even if Zed isn't great into the tanks, he's great into into Victor and into these control mages. So just find find that Zed angle, you know, find that Riven angle. Put Cardinal on his his comfort picks and trust him to win that lane. Yeah, great point, Nelson. Do you have any thoughts on what you want? Um, it's an Ave to do. Oh. Oops, never mind. Sorry about that. Uh, Nelson is taking a quick break. Um, ben, going back to you, is there anything that you think um, Mike's muted need to do different going into game two? Uh, nope. Just obviously that last game was extremely one-sided. Uh, but I have to say, you know, if it isn't broke, don't fix it. Just 
do the same things that they did in that game. Uh, maybe the Rymus was seen as a bit of an opportunistic pick uh, against like the Master Yi and the Kaisa, but find that you know ganking jungler, have uh, pressure from the mid lane, and just make those jungle mid roams into the you know into the jungle into the top lane uh, into the bot lane and if they if they do that again it was it was beautiful in this game and i'm, I'm sure that they could uh, use that to win the entire series yeah great point um and we just got word back from the other our other sister stream williams college lol 2 that um shorting jian lu did take game one over sammy diff it was a slightly closer game, going 17 kills to 8 kills on the other side, um, and 27 minutes. So, shorter game, but a lot more back and forth in the early portions. Yeah, I'm, I'm really interested to see who um, wins on the other side of the bracket. Uh, I definitely would put my money on shorting Jianlu. I got wrecked by their team many times in scrims and yesterday in the tournament but um i i would be very excited if uh sammy diff was able to pull up the upset pull off the upset yeah um so looking at the stats on the other side of the bracket we see that dougie jb morgan and um really carried that game they have 4-1 and seven on both of them. St stellar performance coming again from that top jungle synergy. You know, like while short team shorting Jian Lu is renowned for their captain, Madre the Flame, um, very vocal personality himself. You gotta you gotta be scared of Ducky and JP Morgan and they they're a bit more uh I don't I wouldn't say quiet. Uh, when describing JP Morgan and personally, <laughs> but um, these guys are, they definitely pull, pull their weight class. You know, they, they are abusive. I get, I, I don't know how to describe them. They're just a force to reckon with. Yeah. And uh, it's the real question. Is Eric on track for his third, I believe third Williams winter lull title? So there, you know, Eric must have some str like strategy or secret sauce that he's not sharing, because how can some how could one man win back to back to back winter lulls? Oh, I think obviously I can't speak for Eric, but if I were going to attempt to speak for Eric, he would definitely say that you just outplay them. <laughs> That's the secret, Anna. Just That's outplay the them. secret. Well, uh, mechanics aren't my forte. That's why I'm up here casting, um, you know, so I can let the players play and uh, appreciate it from the sidelines. But uh, all, all the best for Sammy Diff and G Shorting Jian Lu in our sister channel. Um, coming up for our side, we are going to transition soon to the game two of uh, Mike's Muted versus It's an Eighth. Uh, we will do picks and ban shortly. Um, do we uh, do we say already which side the um, It's an Eighth? All right, we're so still waiting on the side selection. So what do you guys we'll think about these? Yeah. What do you guys think about the picks now coming for the next game too? I don't expect a Master Yi pick to be chosen by uh, it's an eighth, but do you think we're going to see something uh, different comp styles, different switches and lanes? What do you think? So welcome back, Nelson. Um, you know we Ben brief Ben and I really talked about this. We we think that Mike's muted should you know stick to the recipe, stick to the OG classic, uh, why change what's not broken? Uh, while we want to see a more aggressive pick from It's an Ave, especially coming out from Cardinal. Um, Cardinal on Zerif did get pushed in quite a bit, didn't get to transition or follow 
SK Telecom during his roams. So we want to see that Zed, you know? We want to mm. see that Riven. We want to Give see... the people what they want. And what they yeah. want is an edgy ninja mid laner. We want and we have blood an update and right blood now. God. We have an update right now. Blue side is chosen by Void. So Void chooses what blue side. So we're going to see uh, it's an eighth choose blue side and get that first pick. So any priorities you think? You know, um, priority picks. I honestly don't know if there are highly contested picks coming out for this tournament. Um, mm. What was the first pick for game one? Do we Shogath was the first pick in game one. Ah. Um, I don't think that the first pick is going to be used to contest anything. We can see that the the champ pools for like at least a lot of the solo laners and the junglers are pretty disjoint so first pick i don't think is really going to matter i would expect to just see another tank another blind pickable champion uh at the beginning of the draft and once again really only seeing those um solo laners like the mid laners and uh like junglers get locked in towards the end of the draft when they can try to trade counter picks back and forth you know I know we talked about aggressive picks in the mid lane from Cardinal, but if we're talking really about what the audience wants, what the people want, I want to see Green Epic unleashed. This guy had a stellar performance on Shogoth, but I want to see him on Kled. I want to see but him he's on a Lowry. Doing his job. No, 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 he's, he's doing, doing his what job. He needs to, <laughs> you know, he needs to do. It's, it's not enough We're just to do your. Fight. It's not enough just to do the bare minimums of your job. I want to see this man excel. I want to see him having fun. <laughs> Yeah, you know, Green, Green Epic Twitch himself <laughs> piping up from the stands. He says, be quiet, P-Jews. Let him have this free Green Epic that people want it. We want to see him on a bruiser. We want to see him carry. Listen, man, I adopted Green Epic a while back, and I have to agree with P-Jews right now. He played his role so well with what his team needed. Just, just keep him on that leash, you know? <sighs> You know, we, we, we understand that the overall team has a need. But we want him unleashed. Yeah, no. Now is not the time. Not Open the time. Pandora's box. Here comes pick and ban, though. And we got the Yumi ban. From... I think the Yumi ban is great. It just gets rid of a very easy-to-execute support. Um, mm -hmm. and, you know, forces Monkey Dong onto something that could perhaps be a little bit more vulnerable. Although, in the last game, he showed that he's perfectly comfortable playing Braum, which is not at all a vulnerable support. So, who knows if that um, strategy is going to be able to work out this time. I really like the Yumi ban because of the fact that um, Yumi, like, when you have an ADC and a support, the support can, the ADC and its support can mess up in lane, and you can punish the support or ADC for messing up positionally in lane. But if you play against a Yumi and another ADC, it's just it's on the ADC's positioning to mess up basically in laning. So banning the Yumi is very smart because it allows more more opportunities for the bot lane to win. So we you see know, the Leona actually, ban, the Hecarim ban. Seeing these support bans, it has it. I've been reminded does. Entropy plays Seraphine because if Blue Side has priority pick, I actually want to see a Seraphine first pick coming out for it's an eighth. Um, Seraphine is a very abusive support lane champion. She has a great ult for either following up or starting fights in chokeholds. Um, great for setting up lane ganks. And this might be the aggressiveness that we need from that bot lane. You know, Entropy on Lulu, it wasn't the same as his Leona or Nautilus. And I, and I want to see blood. I want to see some... I want to see some hunger for, coming down there. I see the stalking... Ramus ban right now. Oh, the Ramus ban. Uh, yeah, stalking Entropy's OB.GG. Uh, we see that he has won Seraphine game, like, about a week ago, and, and that's it. So, you know, he's willing to play the champ, but 
certainly isn't practiced on. Oh. And they take the Senna away from Mike's muted. Interesting. And a quick Senna pick. Does this mean we're gonna see Monkey Dong back on his signature champ, back on that Seraphine? And there's a leash going through, telling Green Epic to play, hold, and play. <laughs> no, Green Epic put back in jail. You know, the man plays a mean Choga, but sadly, he is not unleashed today. It's it's just too good. Uh, especially in this kind of game where they know that they are expecting another tank on the other side, being able to blind a Cho'Gath is incredibly strong. I, it's not that I don't like the pick. I, I think he'll do a great job. You can only complain about the pick so many times before you're not allowed to say that you don't like it. The pick, The pick <laughs> is fine. The pick is like... What what's something I'm okay with but not loving? Um, I can't use white bread because I do love white bread. Uh, it's like whole grain bread, you know. I'll eat it if it's in front of me. I just prefer white bread. And it's healthy. It's what you should eat. Yeah. What a great analogy. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, I know it's better for the system, better for the team, but I just I just want to see him on a carry. And also opting for the Braum again. You know, pretty much I, I what guess, we were saying. Don't, yeah, they're going if it isn't broke, don't fix it. Yeah, but it but crucially, they do not have access to Ramus this game. So what will twice substitute that Ramus with? I'm expecting it. And they choose the Seraphine. Wow. Wow. And Seraphine for Marcus. Um surprisingly enough, they did not do that first pick. And gave Monkey Dog the ch chance to play it, but you know, uh, of course. I think they I definitely the want the Seraphine only if they have the the Senna, right? They're looking for a, a champ to actually farm. This time, it's definitely going to be the the fasting Senna, and uh, Seraphine's able to easily wave clear. Game plank locked in for JTB. Uh, wow. totally throwing out what I was saying about guaranteeing a tank v tank matchup. Let's go! We want aggression. The people want blood, and JTP delivered. We have the captain himself, Captain Gangplank. That being said, GP is a notoriously difficult pick to execute on, and even though he technically counters a lot of tanks, he can also get run over by a Cho'Gath. But he so, can also get going. Let's we'll, think we'll, we'll positively. <laughs> and let's stay. Let's go. It's an Ave. We want to see game three. And I want to see JTB pop off on this gangplank. I'm very, I'm very curious about these uh, this gangplank and these team fights. It's a really... Oh, and they stick. They choose Master Yi. Oh, no respect, not a shred of respect in SKT's repertoire. Oh my like, god. Master Yi locked in after no. completely getting destroyed. No, no, no. Well, we can say, rabbit. well, we can say twice might be BMing after, after showing Ninja Betty what's up and trying to do the reverse. Uh, it's not entirely unfair, or it's not entirely BM on Twice's part. Twice is a renowned Master E player. The guy. Twice's Smurf being named, of course, Jax E. Ramus. Yeah, so, you know, these are his bread and butter. I so... mean, this man right here just said to Minge Betty, I will destroy you on Ramus, and then I'll just do you one better play your champion that you just got destroyed on and be if i haven't heard bm like this it's incredible honestly just and uh he's throwing down the gauntlet he we wanted spice for that cheddar and we got it this is some spicy pepper jack cheese coming out to you live for game two but but i like the best you pick into senna into seraphine into gangplank what are you supposed yeah. to do is gangplank into a master Yi. Seraphine can only alt, right? But against Senna, shoot, like 
the you run master into squishy comps so i like it yeah uh, a nice interaction between um master yi and seraphine uh, master yi cannot get snared by seraphine e because he can't get slowed and that means that the second one will also attempt to slow and won't be able to snare so master yi can run right through seraphine's snare without uh, a care in the world Wow, so a great so you know, uh it's it's an if having their mid lane champion pool definitely squeezed on with a Zed and Diana ban. We gotta wonder what we're gonna see at a cardinal today. Following up, it's an if does do a ban onto Victor, not wanting to see a repeat of last game. And what else are we going to see? I I don't quite know what we're going to see out of Captain Tofu this game. Do you guys have any predictions? Uh, I I would predict to see a, an, another control mage. I don't think that he's going to veer into anything too unconventional, but probably something that gives pressure and protects his Master Yi. You know, hopefully not a Zareth. We could see an Orianna, we could see an Ari. Um, I want to see with a captain. I know it's not going to be the best pick, but you know, I I, I would hate to see a captain. I just want to see action. <laughs> I, mean, I I actually would kind of like to see maybe like a um, like a Lucian hmm. if really? they're able to find magic damage in their bot lane if they're comfortable playing that. But we'll see. Oh, if we're talking about comfort and flexibility this is the team to look for it um and they go for an ash great cc and follow-up and initiation from this champion i i always love to see an ash the freljord bot lane i really like this once you make a pick you can follow up with the it's very good initiation you follow up with a brahm alt um very good for team fights i like it a lot So. Yeah, and I, I do wonder what's going to round out the blue side composition. Um, are you... we going to see a mom? Are we going to see a tanky boy? They can just do the same strategy that Mike's Muta did last time. They they saw the Ramus, or they are, I'm sorry, they saw the Master Yi, and then they, they picked the Ramus, right? Just the this... Ramus is banned. So no, no, but just this it. champion that can click on the Master Yi and CC him. That's what you need here. See, but what options do we have? That's the question. Plenty, well, plenty of options exist. But we'll, we'll see if they pick any of them up. I think a Gragas is a pretty good one. Okay, so Gragas, is this for Minge Betty or Cardinal? Uh, definitely for Minge Betty. I don't think I've seen Cardinal play the Gragas much. Uh, and I, I have seen Minge Betty play the Gragas, so. We're just waiting for their final pick. Cardinal look thinking long and hard about what is best to secure that win for his team. All I'm saying is you want a champion that can easily CC Master Yi, and even though it's short, Riven has a very consistent stun, so it's an option. Let's see if they hopefully do the Riven pick. If they do the Riven pick, it'll be, oof, spicy. Oh, I would love to see the Riven pick. And it is! We do oh pick Cardinal's Riven. Cardinal it's says existed. if he's going down, he's going down on his main pick. And we're going to see the exile herself. The man himself choose. Oof, Riven, I'm excited. Now, uh, Nell, do you think that this is going to be a AP Gragas or a Tank Gragas? They have to go AP Gragas on this one. I mean, Minge Betty likes to play carries. He's probably going to go... Um, I don't know what you go first item on AP Grag Gragas, but probably Proto Belt, maybe? You but get Night Harvester. Yeah, I think it is Night, Night Harvester. Harvester. Yeah, on Night Gragas. Harvester. And Captain Tofu, Captain SK Telecom T1 on his Ari. You know, I don't quite know how the Ari Riven matchup goes in the mid lane, but 
I mean, mid lane's going to be very, very spicy right now. Uh, looking at oh, Mike's yeah. muted. Mike's muted team comp is pretty standard, I would say. Uh, assassin in the jungle, a, a mage assassin in mid lane, tank in the top lane, tank support, and then like a really solid ADC. They can look for picks. They can set up. Like, they have they have it all basically. And looking at uh, TFT right there, I don't know. You know, I, what do you think about that team comp? It's it's spicy and it's gonna try to run you over early game with like aggressive gragas ganks and uh attempt to do much of what mike's muted was able to do to the master g pick last game where the ramus is just able to get off a bunch of early ganks and snowball the entire map but man without any consistent front line I'm not sure how well they're going to be able to transition into that mid game, you know, and fight over those dragons. I'm not sure if they're going to be able to snowball all of the, you know, the stacking dragon souls the same way that Mike's muted were able to do. But so they got a lot of damage. <laughs> I would say it's an eighth comp is pretty. I weirdly enough, I like it because with Gore Drinker Riven, she can kind of act as a pseudo frontline, and mm -hmm. they have disengaged with Gragas. They have engaged with Seraphine. And they have mm -hmm. the GP alt. And a lot and of people GP don't like actually great at helping start the engage. Exactly. That AoE slow gonna be great for setting up the Seraphine E. Um, because you know, she's not reliant on just her own slows. Any any slow coming out from Senna autos, Senna snare can transition into an immediate stun. Like there's a lot to look for on this team. I, I mean you have to look at the heal healing and shielding with Seraphine and Senna onto their front line, Gragas and like Riven. It's gonna be it's gonna be interesting, really. I, I, I think, think the, the Riven is gonna be the big barometer for this yes. team's performance. Oh, yes. most definitely. The and Riven the and Gragas, I think they have to work together to secure that lead so that they can transition to a great mid mid game. I think uh the big barometer on Mike's mute is that Master Yi that Master Yi needs to kill the back line. He needs to be able to just cause enough chaos where the Gragas can't be in the front line with Riven, but has to be trying to peel this Master E off. Or and then the we can do see consistent damage in the Tofu. Ari to move around. You know, if Tofu gets going on that Ari, if he gets those charms, he, he gets those picks with Ash, it might not matter how fed any of those numbers on It's an Ave get, because these guys can just probably pop them. Yeah, so. they have a bunch of really easy targets on It's an 8th, and you just have to be so concerned about an Ash Arrow landing from a screen away, and the Ari just dashing in and getting a, a free combo off on your, your squishy teammates. GP, of course, has the orange to get out of this, yeah, but so the, the other members of the team have to be really on the lookout for for these arrows and a lot of the onus is going to be on pharaoh to make things happen um with the engage i think the biggest thing is that who which team sets up first around these objectives if uh like either team sets up first they have the clear advantage gp wants to set up his uh, barrels around dragon and uh I mean, Mike's muted. If they step around Dragon, they can just look for picks with Ash Arrow or Ari Charm, you know? Mm -hmm. So And to, to follow up that question about who's going to be able to set up first, it's who's going to be able to get the waves pushing in and who's going to be able to secure that lane priority. Last game, we saw that Victor had total lane priority over the Xerath, uh, while the bot lane, the Lulu and Kaisa started out with more priority over the, um, over the Braum lane. But now this time, Ari versus Riven. Ari has the range advantage, but I'm pretty sure that Riven is going to be able to slice through those minions faster. And we'll see if that difference in mid lane pushing power is going to lead to like different outcomes this game. So we're just seeing the teams do their pick and ban in the client once again. Um, they're doing this, of course, because not all the uh, players have access to all the champs. So we're making sure that the players who don't um, don't have any unfair disadvantage because they can't trade with their teammates. Um, 
So we see here, it, it is for sure that Cardinal Riven um, and Pharaoh on Ash, you never know with Team Mike's Muted because uh, SK like Telecom Team 1 and Pharaoh can actually switch roles. Uh, they both are willing to play mid lane and ADC. So just good to see some confirmation there. Um, guys, before this game starts, do we have any predictions on who you think will take this match? Who you think won the pick and ban phase? Um, and, you know, just overall thoughts going into this. My money is on Mike's Muted. We saw them dismantle It's an 8th in the last game. And I think their comp this game is easier to execute. And they have the, the uh, momentum going in. So last time, I didn't believe in them. This time, I've learned my lesson. All my money on uh, Mike's Muted. Nope, I'm switching with you. I'm saying it's an eighth on this one. They changed up their style. I'm being dead serious right here. They changed up their style. I don't think Minge Betty is playing. Well, they Minge Betty's not going to tilt this game, in my opinion. I think a lot of it was on the top lane and the jungle, just beating a lot in the early game. And they changed up their champions. You know, uh, top lane's not playing a tank. He's playing a carry. And then Gragas is playing like a pseudo carry in a sense, but he's playing the main engage. You know, he decides when they go and when they don't go in. So, you know, and the Riven, basically, the, he's playing what Cardinal plays a comfort pick Riven. So, yeah, um, I think Ace and Eighth might have this game. Well, if uh, last game's prediction accuracy is anything to go by, it's an Eighth coming in with a huge advantage this time. <laughs> uh, I mean, we never know, Ben. Like... I we're just casters. We could only make a prediction based on, you know, some rough idea of the game that we got. But I just feel it in my bones, Anna, you know. Feel in uh, your bones. It's, it's your, your left tomorrow. knee aches. That yeah. means red team's going to win. Your right knee aches. That means blue team's going to win. And that's how I make my decisions. Simple yeah. as that. You put your weather stone outside. Um, Do my rain dance. And you better dance furiously because <laughs> this game is coming up and it is spicy. Will It's an Eighth be able to defend their dreams of making it to the finals and taking it all for Winter Lull? Um, we have, again, uh, JTB102 up in the top lane, Minge Betty L9 in the jungle, um, Cardinal in the mid lane, Voidless, Captain Voidless in as the ADC, and Entropy as support. On the other side, for Mike's Muted, we have uh, the crowd favorite, the Silver Smurfer himself, Green Epic up in the top lane, followed by uh, MVP of last game, twice in the jungle, um, Captain SK Telecom T1 in the mid lane, Pharaoh on that Ash ADC, and Monkey Dong 123 as Braum. And so before we... Oh, sorry. Uh, I was before... going to say, tell us more about our sponsor right here. Oh, yeah. So our title sponsor is Drop Pod. Drop Pod is a Williams alumni founded social media and gaming startup, guys, and they are centered around making it easier to connect with your friends to play online multiplayer games. One part gaming community and one part social media app. You guys have heard me say it again. Drop Pod just launched and they are in open beta. Drop Pod hopes that the Williams network will be a major part of its community. So Go check them out in the Apple and Google Play Store. Yeah, definitely. Uh, we're going to just drop the ad in, in a second, but download this app, guys. Welcome back, everyone. We're going to get into a spicy game, too, between Mike's Muted and It's an Eighth. Ben, what do you think about going to this level one? Are we going to see a spicy, spicy tree strat, or are we going to see a standard five strat? Uh, you know, once again, there's a Braum. 
There's a Cho'Gath. We saw them tentatively look for a level one in the last game. I want to see them commit and actually follow through with it this time. But I don't think it's going to happen. I think that both teams are just going to um, sort of sit on the sit on the five point. Although I, oh, I will say this wait, time, Seraphine. This time we have a Seraphine and Senna on yeah. It's and Ave. Those are some fantastic level one champions. Greg is himself. If he gets his belly, um, belly jump, is not one to scoff at. Along with Riven. You know, Riven, either with her cues or her stun, is going to be some great follow-up. So I, I wouldn't knock out It's an Ave for their level 1 potential either. Yeah. So now getting, getting looking into the Rift right now, um, looking at the Summer Spells and uh, Keystones, uh, I don't agree with Braum taking Exhaust this game. I mean, I guess he's going to try to focus on the Riven, but uh, I don't I don't like the Exhaust on Braum. I think he m needs more of an Ignite, but everything else seems a little standard. Uh, SK Telecon took Ignite into the Riven, and Riven has Teleport, so this might be a little spicy. And then looking at the Keystones, Keystones seems very, very standard. And yeah, oh, Predator on Gragas, so we're going to see a lot of ganking happen from Minge Betty. Yeah. One difference between last game's match E and this game's match E is, of course, that Keystone. Uh, Conqueror was the choice for Minge Betty's match E, but Twice is instead opting for the Hail of Blades. Well, that makes sense because Minge Betty had to go through Ramus and Cho'Gath, so that's why you take the Conqueror for the tanks. Mm -hmm. But if yeah. you're going for squishies, you want Hail of Blades. You don't really need the. You just need more bursts, really, for these squishy targets, so. Yep. And no level 1 shenanigans. Both teams oh. feeling the pressure, don't want a coin flip, and they decide not to cheat, as Madre would say. Hey, hey, and hey, just... nothing wrong with a good <laughs> Gouda or pepper, bat, uh, pepper Jack cheese. Uh, you know, while we want these teams to showcase their finest in a great, uh, you know, back hey, and forth. Their finest team. starts at level one. I, exactly, I exactly. The that. game starts when the game starts. There's no, uh, the gentleman's agreement is a thing of the past. Never heard anyone not liking level one starts, really. Never heard that before, but getting into this game right here, little trades between grass top laners right now. Um, looks pretty easy. Looking at the jungle path thing, Master Yi is going for the full full clear while Gragas is going for the early level 3. He's on his blue buff right now, so it looks like he might mm -hmm. uh, invade to or gank topside after blue uh, Gromp, so exciting to yeah. see that. It's it's looking like a very potent topside gank uh, setup here. The Cho'Gath... Um, can, we, can we see how the lane is pushing top lane? I think the Cho'Gath is pushing ever so slightly, yep, into the GP. And GP has his Gragas about to hit level three after this Gromp is finished. I I would be very scared if I was this Cho'Gath, and let's see if he recognizes the danger that he's in. I don't think he's awarded yet, so no. So it looks like bot lane, so no. In the mid lane, I just want to say I am so happy to see Cardinal on and this. Here, here's the gank starting. Oh, Greg is go. going around, going through the try, getting behind the Cho'Gath, and Cho'Gath has no idea. This is a perfect gank setup. Let's see if Cho'Gath can outplay it. Rupture misses, Body Slam lands, and that's going to be a pretty easy pickup. I think even if he flashes, he shouldn't be able to get away. Oh, no, he does just oh, barely. Oh, and he just barely. Oh, just... but Midge oh, goes Midge for Midge more. Going in, Absolutely. but he's silent. Just gives away first blood. He, he was so attached to picking up that Cho'Gath that he totally overcommitted and that the play swings back. An eighth. I, I don't know what to say about that. I don't know if that's a lingering mental boom from last game or there's... You got the top laner splash, there's no need to do that. Why do that? Do you know, do you know that, that meme of a, a skater doing like a, a kickflip? off of the, a railing and then landing right on a rake, which smacks him in the face. I feel like that's what we witnessed 
in the top lane. The setup was so good for the gank, but the execution <gasps> was terrible. Epic. And Green Pick picks up another solo kill onto the GP. This is what I was saying, where GP technically the counter, but you know, you give the Cho'Gath an inch and he'll take a mile. That's insane. Honestly, let's watch this. He's just using red buff slows and GP's not flashing, you know? Yeah, so it's it, it's that unfortunate level 3 gank that went wrong, really turning in the favor of Green Epic. This is... This guy showcasing how potent Cho'Gath silence is, denying Greg is that flash by silencing him when he was under turret and converting that into a double buff transfer. Green Epic, you know, he might not be unleashed on the champions that he want to play, but he is certainly unleashed on this Jogoff. Yeah, if he wants to play the Alawi, he's really got to int more on, on these tanks. He's, he's playing too well. All right, well, it looks like we just have some lanes in a relatively even state. Seraphine going for the root, doesn't land. Just a little bit of poke being traded back and forth, not too much. Eyes on the junglers, Master Yi, still full clearing. Let's see if he spots this control ward. Oh, and a root oh. lands the Braum shield in the wrong direction, and oh, then and the Senna follow following up. This might be a kill. Flash is forced out from both of the bot laners. You know, if you're I the Gragas, you have to see a giant target painted on that Ashen Bomb right now. Oh, most definitely. You know, I am so glad that we are seeing Voidless and Entropy on these slightly more aggressive comp. I, I just didn't feel like they got a chance to really spread their wings and flaunt their skill set in that previous match, but we're seeing it here today. We're seeing it here in game two. I just, I just love the vitality showing up on It's an Eighth. Yep, and we see that uh, Cardinal on the Riven, 10 CS up, pushes a wave all the way into uh, Ari's turret, really taking, uh, making the Riven pick work, taking advantage of the wave clear that the champion offers, honestly. And this time, we see uh, a very different story from the early game that happened last game where we have farm leads in the bot lane and the mid lane. Oh, and sorry, a quick message coming in from the other, our sister broadcast. Um, it turns out that shorting Jian Lu did rocket to the moon. They are They have secured their place in the finals, uh, winning a 2-0 game over Sammy Diff. Um, we will see them face the winner of this series at are we coming back at 7 p.m or 6 p.m uh at, when the schedule says we will be back we'll be back with that game after this yeah after uh just 7 p.m okay. eastern standard now time. we should we should really watch this spot lane here because if you look at the wave it's in a really bad spot for the red side that wave isn't going to make it into turret and it's going to be in a position to freeze, but the Gragas doesn't look for the gank. Right, he chose to and reset. And resets. Twice, very, taking very his chance to solo that first Drake. You know, it's going to be uncontested as um, its Nave have no idea that this is happening in the pack. They're really letting Master Yi play the game that he wants. Um, you know, last game we saw the Master Yi go for uh, a lot of a lot of ganks, uh, a lot of attempted kills on the top lane, but this time, oh, you know, wait, maybe we are going to see a gank from the Master Yi. I would expect for this to just be waiting for the Ari, but uh, the Ari is moving back mid, so we're probably just going to see this play fizzle out and Master Yi go back to farming his jungle. I just think it's going to be a little too hard. Voidless still has cleanse and flash, and Jupy again also mm -hmm. has flash um while pharaoh is level six it's it's just a really hard gank to pull off mm -hmm. yeah and we see greg is taking the rift herald right now uh making use of that information that master Yi just soloed the dragon is, and is going to be on the bot side of the map but the lane pressure from both solo lanes means that this Gragas is getting collapsed on and is oh, going to be no. pushed off of this and the charm lands 
the flash from the Gragas ult, but Ari is oh, able to get to the great. other side of the cask and finish Dash. off the Gragas. Now, By GP SK in a bad Telecom. spot doesn't have a flash. The Senna ult comes through, but now the Master Yi is able to pick up Riven. GP gets his flash away, but once again, it's too late, just barely. And uh, a two for a three for one in favor of Mike's muted. And we're gonna do a quick replay of that match of that skirmish. I mean, it is a bloody and brutal fight. We see it time and time again. Green Epic and SK Telecom T1 just having a pushing their lane priority, collapsing onto Minji Betty L9 first. And just pushing that advantage, this fight went is a disaster for it's an Ave. As yeah, and we, we do have to note that uh, Cardinal was able to pick up the return kill onto the Ari, so a little bit of gold back into his pocket. But this time, you know, compared to last game, SK Telecom was able to get off uh, a lot of the roams because there just wasn't um, pressure from the Zareth. This time, the lane is in an even spot, but. The Ari is just first to the play, you know, makes the makes the faster move. Um, looks like we're going to have a little bit of action coming up in the spot lane. Let's see what happens. Level six on all of the bot laners, ultimates at the ready, and these ultimates can do a lot of work here. Snare lands, Seraphine Beautiful. ultimate Made not by blocked entropy. by the shield onto the Ash, and that's a clean pickup. Flash blown by the Seraphine, and they're looking to put some more damage onto the Braum. Probably not so, going to be able to pick him up. The Entropy Voidless bot lane taking advantage of that early flash that they had gotten out of Ash and Braum. That Gragas looking for the Braum behind the tower. Is he going to find him? Gets the body slam, but the cask just barely misses, and Braum's able to walk that one off. Hopping back to live, we can see that not too much has changed. A slight gold lead, you know, just about 600 up for Mike's Muted. The the farm really balancing out the kills that are going over. And um, let's let's see how this game progresses. Uh, can we get the objective timer for the next dragon? Looks like uh, 90 seconds. So those teams can start setting up relevant vision around now and. We'll, we'll see how they decide to play out this uh, this next dragon. Ben, I am so excited for this game. Oh, I mean, and a I... sneaky gank. The Master Yi slips into the bush, knows that the enemy bot lane is trying to play aggressive. The Ash Arrow lands. The Master Yi goes in, but gets hit by the snare. The Braum lands onto the Seraphine. Seraphine has no flash. Remember, she used it to pick up that last kill. And now the TP comes in a little bit late, kiting back. Oh, the Riven is not too late at all. Picks up the Braum and pushes back Ash and Master Yi. You know, a one great roam by Cardinal to collect that kill. Uh, Mini Betty L9 trying to do, trying to hold mid lane as best as he can. I, I love, I love this game. You know, compared to game one, we see it's an A really, really showcasing their familiarity with their champions. They're a lot more aggressive and proactive all around. You gotta love you gotta love it. Like, this mm -hmm. back and forth is what we are Oh, Charm lands onto see. the Gragas, loses 60% of his HP, but that's probably going to amount to not much. Although, maybe this is the Herald being dropped mid lane. Let's see how much uh, Mike's Muted uh, are trying to take with this, uh, with this play. Is it just the two plates? It looks like it's just the two plates that they're going for. And then probably they're gonna turn and look at the Dragon. Oh, three plates. So a great funnel of gold into um, that Ari, really helping her transition into these fights later on, where she can possibly one-shot any of the squishies on its eighth side. You know, I, I think Twice is doing a great job of enabling his laners as best as he can, while also, you know, lining his own pockets. This mastery is scaling beautifully. He's already two and zero. Finished his dust blade, mm -hmm. and the dust blade uh, departure from what we saw from the mastery last game. Well, once again, it's going to be a function of the fact that last game mastery had to hit a bunch of tanks, and this time mastery has the luxury of just trying to attack carries. So uh, a totally different build: hail of blades and uh, dusk blade. Um, 
coming out pretty early into the game for the Master Yi, who's now uh, trying to start up the dragon solo. But we, we saw this last game from uh, Minge Betty's Master Yi, where he gets spotted out on this ward trying to solo dragon. But the pressure from mid lane is enough to dissuade blue team from trying to contest. It looks like they were low on Seraphine mana, and Gragas was on the other side of the map. So that's two dragons given over to Mike's Muted. You know, a phenomenal macro decision again by Mike's Muted. These guys are very clean, very certain. They, they have of... the focus. They yeah. they see they see the dragons, and you know they they let that one sit on the map for a little bit, but they made sure to come and collect it uh, at least faster than their opponents. But. And thankfully, the gold difference isn't that large quite yet. About a 1.5k gold lead for Mike's Muted. Um, still, you know, while it is significant, it is definitely possible for its nave to come back. Mm -hmm. um, also, I want to take a second to... Oh, wait, looks like we have some action. Ari trying to poke out the Gragas, gets spotted by the Riven, but a quick Everfrost lets her escape scot-free. Um, as I was uh, about to say, earlier in the draft, I remarked that this was definitely going to be a Fasting Senna, and um, I was wrong. It is a Farming Senna. So, something to note. No Fasting Sennas have been seen as of yet in the series. You know, but oh, Cardinal oh. going in onto the Ari. GP is roamed down, but Ari dashes away twice. The barrel doesn't quite chain, and now Riven is actually forced to flash away as Master Yi comes ulting into the lane. Master Yi had also flashed, so it is a summoner spell trade for those two, but Ari still has hers, which means she might be able to punish Riven. Yes, indeed, and Cho'Gath roaming down, trying to look for something. Um, if I'm on red team, I would love to see this Cho'Gath just start up the Rift Herald. You know, he has all of this pressure top lane. No one can fight him. No one can walk into him. Um, so rather than like just pushing these top waves, I, I want to see him go for that objective. He, he doesn't need his jungler. He has his, he has his chomp. He could just take it on his own. Although bot lane, Master Yi lurking, waiting for that Ash arrow. And there it is, goes wide. And is there a return play from the Seraphine. Nope. Looks like everything fizzles out and Master is just going to go back to farming. A great dodge by Entropy and Voilus really taking advantage of that Shroud of Senna's to prevent the engage. Um, great job by them staying alive. Yep, and now we see uh, Riven and Gragas pick up the Scuttle Crab and now they're here for the 3v1 onto the Cho'Gath. Let's see if we can pick it up. Rupture oh, doesn't manage to connect. A great cask knocks Cho'Gath back in, but he flashes out, silences two of them. Now the Rupture lands. Ari has joined the fray, and a bite plus a few uh, Ari skill shots is enough to clean up the Gragas. But with the shutdown gold, you have to think that that's positive for the, the blue side. It's totally worth. I mean, Green Epic was an absolute final boss it took three champions just wailing on him to get get him into that state a great job by sk telecom team one roaming around um getting that return kill onto minge betty but and, i mean just a beautiful gragas ultimate there like gets oh, uh gets the full knock back onto the cho'gath forces his flash and even then cho'gath isn't able to make up enough distance to get away yeah, so great play by Minge Betty. Great play by It's an Eighth. Um, you know, showing that oh, there's still Oh, Master Yi looking for the recalling Gangplank. Is he going to find him? Oh, Gangplank cancels his recall. I don't think he was going to make it anyway. Let's see if he can win the 1v1. The first barrel gets taken down by twice. The second oh, barrel lands, oh, and that's a solo around. kill. Gets the shutdown onto the Master Yi. JTB doing a phenomenal job. Really... <sighs> This guy has been playing Gangplank fen just phenomenally. You know, I know that he had a hard time in lane Riven against Green Epic. For the Cho'Gath, landing a lot of skills, dashing all around, but it doesn't matter. Cho'Gath just takes a bite out of this fighter, and Cho'Gath is forced to flash away afterwards. A uh, Ash Arrow coming in from downtown, trying to support the Cho'Gath, but Cho'Gath says, 
I I can win it on my own. <laughs> and Green Epic is a big boy. He takes a bite out of the world. He takes a bite out of Cardinal. You know, what can't this guy do? And here he is once again, teleporting down to the bot lane. Yep, uh, we see that in this team fight, the Cho'Gath and the Ari working to zone the rest of the team off of the dragon. Ash getting caught out, Gale Force is away, but has been chunked really low. The charm misses, the, the Q misses. Let's see if uh, blue side can, can make something happen here. The dragon not quite low yet. GP ult burned, but now the Riven and Gangplank are joining and the health bars are pretty low on red team. Seraphine ult catches Ari and Cho'Gath. This might be the engage. Lots of CC used. The Master Yi chunked down, bursted out immediately. And the okay. Riven is, is going forward, sees these low health bars. Oh! And the Cho'Gath gets taken down. An Phenomenal absolute disaster. Phenomenal setup by Voidless. I mean, just saving his teammate Cardinal and converting it into a kill. A two for zero and a dragon secured for it and eight. This team is not going down silently. They are here, they are present, and they did a fantastic job. I want to say Voidless really, really showing his chops as the champ. I mean... First, chunking out Pharaoh, making him back off, not to having uh, putting it almost out of 4v5, and then kiting constantly. We see a great follow up ult by Entropy that, that catching both Ari and Shogov. It was great play overall. Yeah, I think that. The momentum has uh, definitely shifted in this game. We see that the gold is back to even, but the last few plays certainly going in favor of, uh, you know, team is an eighth. Uh, I am really curious how this is going to develop. So we actually have a guest caster joining us here today, Eric Johnson, captain of uh, Shorting G on Lu, better known as Madre the Flame. Welcome, Eric. Thanks for having me. Happy to be here. So, what do you what do you think about the state of this game so far, Eric? Who do you think has the uh, the upper hand? And uh, well, let me summarize it by much. saying. It seems that I'm brought up to cast when there is a certain virus that infects the teams. The name of that is Master Yi. So <laughs> my evaluation can be summarized by which team fell for it this game? <laughs> I favor blue side. All right. You, you're betting against the Master Yi. You don't think that this pick is going to work out? No, I think it's a little complicated by the GP, like if they had, I don't know if the pick bans were, but if they had like a CC tank top, then for sure they would win. But yeah, yeah. I still favor blue side. Cardinals, Riven, Scaling Sana, Scaling Seraphine. Yeah, the Gragas and Riven have been doing a really good job of uh, shutting the Master Yi out of these past few skirmishes. We'll see if he's able to find a moment. Right now, a lot of the gold on red side on Mike's Muted is on the Cho'Gath, whereas the gold on uh, blue side is you know, on the Senna and on the, the Riven, which seems like a, a much better distribution. So uh, we just want to bring up that the observers have noted that Cho'Gath has eight stacks, while Senna has 50. Uh, Voidless really approaching that 60 stack mark, um, you know, where he will be a daunting force to reckon with. Yeah, I'm a little... Oh, Ash Arrow comes out, lands on Senna, an easy cleanse, gets away from the charm, and a, a good Beautiful look cleanse. It's Arrow. a Captain Jack. Voidless yeah. popping that immediately after it landed able to dodge that follow-up by SK Telecom T1, saving his life. Phenomenal moves. Yeah, I was just going to say, I would prefer to have farming Seraphine in the bot lane. Mm -hmm. Like, 
uh, Fasting Sun is so good right now. He would have upwards of 100 souls for sure by this point. And Seraphine's someone whose farm is pretty good on. Yeah. I, I do agree. In the draft, we did note that we thought for sure it was going to be Fasting Senna, but it, it looks like the supports both in the, the previous game and in this game just aren't quite comfortable taking on that farming role. And so we've uh, seen two Farming Senna's so far this series. Bit of a tragedy, you know, as, a, a, as someone who really looks forward to the aggressive Bloodthirsty supports. Top yeah, laners making some trades, both of them thinking that they have the upper hand, and it looks like Cho'Gath is the one who forces the flash out of the GP advantage. I mean, Red Green side. Epic just slapping JTB with the force of his wallet. This guy is, you know, he's Wall Street bets on opening day. This, you know, rises up with the stocks that he likes. And we see that the Ash Arrow is coming back up, and uh, so is the Dragon. I really want to see um, Pharaoh look for another one of these picks on maybe someone, um, one of these squishy targets that can get blown up by the Ari. He knows that Senna doesn't have the cleanse this time. Oh no, oh, JTB. Ari walk, waiting in the bush. JTB walks right in, gets charmed up, hit by the Everfrost, hit by the Ash Arrow after he eats the oranges. There's his ultimate gone, and uh, an easy pick into what's now going to be a 4v5 over this third dragon. You know, Fourth dragon. Third dragon for red team. A great choice, macro decision by SK Telecom Team 1 and Green Epic, where they lied in wait in that bush, but... Chogath that... making space. You see that the Gragas is getting antsy. Goes for the cask, looking for the steel, but gets hit by the charm. A nice Seraphine ult hits the Chogath, gets through. Riven into the backline, gets exhausted. Master Yi starting to cut up the enemy team. Gets a reset, gets two. A third one gets chomped by Chogath, but Gragas keeps his cool, steals the dragon, and ease on out. But you have to think that that's going to be Baron over to the red team. Yeah, I would... I think that's the main reason not to contest there. Even if you think you have a slight chance of getting the Drake, they're just going to go straight to Baron. And it not being Soul, not a, not a great trade for blue side. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the, we'll have to check the gold after this um, Baron is done resolving, but I would expect this to be a big swing in favor of Mike's Muted. Yeah, now we can see that they are 3,500 gold up. Uh, breaking away from that even point we were at before that last dragon fight. So Green Epic all throughout that fight, I mean, Voidless was wailing on him, but he still lived with over half his health. I just, who can kill this Cho'Gath? Like, in these chaotic team fights where he has the support of his like back line, of that Ari and that Ash, it's just so hard to deal that if, finishing If blow. the Senna isn't able to just sit there and auto-attack him for, you know, a straight minute, it is very difficult for them to eat through this Cho'Gath. And in that last fight, we could see that Riven was able to beautifully dive onto the back line of the red team, but a nice exhaust and getting tagged by the Braum Pass. Oh, and another fight, an Everfrost lands onto the Riven, easily picked up, uh, Seraphine ult hits the Ari, cast just barely misses, Ari ulting out of the way, Gragas now in an uncomfortable position, flashes away, but gets picked up by Ari, now Master Yi has the ultimate, has the extended duration, goes very deep, gets two, before eventually dropping to Gangplank, and that's going to be a four for one. With Baron, you have to think that this is going to be the inhibitor. So twice doing a great job, you know, giving up his life to make sure that the two bot lane duo for um, it's an eighth go down with him. He has playing phenomenally all series long. And uh, this guy might be the MVP contender for the series. Oh, yeah, absolutely. After the first game's performance and then uh, this game getting all of these kills and you know mopping up these team fights with Master Yi. Twice is making a strong case for him as a series MVP. 
So, Eric, did did Twice's play convince you about the viability of mastery in this tournament, or do you still think it's a plague upon this land? Mm, I definitely think, still think it's a plague. You know, maybe the plague is killing the other team, but <laughs> still an, a nefarious force. I will probably have to t <laughs> reverse my prediction here. Red side. Looking really clean, honestly. Been continually impressed by the improvement that Tofu's team has seen. Mike muted. I'm just in terms of like the coordination, um, the rotations, and even like breaking out new picks like the Ari. It's cool. Yeah, and I mean, obviously, looking a little bit past this game, if the red side is able to close out this 5,000 gold lead that they have, of course, your team is going to be facing them in the finals. Uh, oh, and we get some action. Master G getting picked off gives a shutdown over to Cardinal. People rejoice. <laughs> <laughs> and that's the that's exactly the kind of play that you need to make um, to get back into it um, as the blue side. Yeah, Cardinal making a fantastic play, just popping that mastery. Gragas oh, and GP looking for the Cho'Gath. No, 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 not no, 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 that's not the board. it. <laughs> and I think that was the right decision. I, uh -oh. I don't think he wants to get the Q. Can get green epic. This guy is a skyscraper. I mean, look at him, the Everest of the of the fucking rift. Oh, I mean, excuse me. Whoa. Um Language, language. Uh, yeah. One strike, by the way. My bad, my bad. <laughs> uh, it, it's, I just don't know who can take down Green Epic. He is an epic monster himself. The guy, the guy can waddle anywhere, frankly. Yep, and yep. it's going to waddle over to this Drake up in 10 seconds. So this is not soul for either team, so don't lose the game over this. But definitely, both teams want a, a chance. Ooh, a roster lands onto the bot lane, but no follow-up. And uh, while we do have this spicy fight coming up, I do want to say a warm welcome to Abraham Park, who is joining us on this casting desk. Hello, oh, Abe. Thanks, thanks, hello. All right, looks like the Cho'Gath is making space. Both teams hesitant to actually start the dragon. Um, maybe an Ash Arrow or a Seraphine Alt could look to start this fight off. Let's see how antsy these teams get and how patient they're willing to play it. A Rupture misses. Man, this show is and... running so well. He's a one-man army in the front. Yeah, he, he just is making so much space, and all 10 members have just been standing around this dragon for the past you know 30 seconds. And now the red team slowly starting to concede the position. Master Yi getting distracted a little bit by a blue buff, handing it over to the Ari. Also, I think... Oh, go ahead, Abe. I was going to just say that Cho'Gath is also just sitting on 2,000 gold right now. He's not even... Oh, like... Cho'Gath gets rooted, and it looks like they are going to walk away. But Cho'Gath is at half health now. We have to see how yes, the rest of the Yes, but half health is how much exactly? Oh, and a oh. charm. Beautiful charm. Wow. Land. Snipes the Seraphine. There's a Braum all forces the blue team back in. Mastery is running in. Ari is following up on the flank. Mastery has to go right back out, dies to the dragon. But the oh, ribbon flashes in, gets exhausted. And now we have a, a three versus three happening on the. Oh, yep, now it's a 3v2 as Ash falls and. Ari Brom, the only ones oh, left alive. On and the it's map. surprising turnaround. I mean, I, I really thought that. Um, SK Telecom's team had it after that quick pick by him onto the Seraphine, but Voidless and Cardinal turn it around in this beautiful fight. I mean, they just kited it so well, slowly whittling Green Epic down over the Eon, and they finally did get their man. Mm -hmm. yeah, Cardinal had a beautiful uh, timing on his EQW onto Yi, and then Yi got picked off by the Dragon at the end. And then Cardinal did the same thing with his flash to get into the backside and kill Ash. Yeah, yeah. really the Riven play, uh, absolutely putting the team on his back uh, in that fight. Look at these look at these cancels. That is the, the reason play. why I banned Riven every game against him. But I think we saw the fundamental way to beat this Cho'Gath is to play around it, right? Cho'Gath is unkillable and strong, but if you can flip the switch and turn onto the back line while Cho'Gath is kind of out of position, 
and it, trying to dive. Doesn't matter that he's slowly like queuing and Wing everyone, but. Well, on the on the other hand, we also saw the blue team spend a bunch of time just using their range advantage to whittle away at the Cho'Gath's HP. Which seemed pretty effective. It's had such a good pick comp, right? But after that initial like pick, I definitely favor blue side. We saw that mm -hmm. Yi wants to dive in. He has no one to dive with him. After yeah. Ari uses... Oh, and after Ari lands onto the Gragas, the silence isn't quite quick enough, and Gragas is able to body slam away. A rupture lands on the Seraphine, but that's not going to be the re-engage. Oh, oh, Ari into the back line, misses the charm onto the Senna, has to retreat. A TP coming in from the Riven, and now Cardinal has joined the fray. You have to favor Ultimate. blue side here, right? Yeah. They, have, they have all their ultis up, except for a cannon barrage, and red side's pick potential is, is gone. I would like to mm -hmm. see them just... I mean, make them start the Baron, make them run into you, but th then look to turn, look to take the fight. Yep. I'd like to see a Seraphine. Another charm here. misses. Yeah, I would, I'd love to see a, a Seraphine. Rupture lands, but not much is going to come from it. Silence prevents the Gragas from getting in, but he waits it out, throws another cask, isn't able to knock anyone into his team. Cardinal, Cardinal dodges the charm. Play out from the Cho'Gath. Cardinal in oh, onto the Ari. Oh, and a great Ari, Seraphine wall on the Ari side. Gets away. And the health bar is just so healthy on blue side. A, a big rupture, but Braum is dead. Ash is dead. And it's an eighth swinging back into this game. Oh, it's this classic Senna Seraphine. I mean, look at the sustain that they bring for their team. That Seraphine shield, the Senna heals from those cues, especially as her team is lined up chasing these fights. Oh, uh, but a TP oh, comes awesome. in from the Cho'Gath. They're looking to contest. Ari ults through, but is getting chased down by the yeah. Senna, flashes away, but the notes follow, and Ari drops. Cho'Gath eats a Seraphine, but that's not going to be of much consequence. And, oh man, it's an Abe just really bringing it back. These guys are doing a phenomenal job kiting and doing these sustained fights. Um, and we might see them secure this Baron. Yeah, it doesn't look like the red side is going to go for the third contest onto the Baron. Looking to just let this one go, lick their wounds, uh, group up, and see if they can take the next fight. Yeah, a huge swing here. We see that both comps operating fundamentally as you'd expect. The pick doesn't work for red, for red side, and these prolonged fights will always just favor, right? Like I said, the Ther Theraphine and Senna. And especially notable, Tofu with that huge flank, as he said, kind of whiffing everything. Mm. Um, pretty pivotal moment there. Yeah, it, it, if the charm lands and uh, that damage connects, it's a totally different fight there. Yeah, the pressure is on for SK Telecom Team 1 to land these charms on this Senna, uh, try to pick her off in these fights so that she can't whittle down that Cho'Gath so Green Epic can continue being the menacing Godzilla on the rift that he was earlier in this game. We'll have to see as these teams are starting to loop around for this potential Infernal Dragon Soul. And, you know, guys, I would say that this, this Infernal Soul... Going for um, team, it's an eighth, might be a death nail and help them clutch out this game. I, I don't know if anything can be a death nail just yet. The Ari and the Ash always have the ability to find these picks and get their team back in the game, but definitely would be a large advantage from a game which they've been, the blue side has been chronically behind in. As you see them posturing, the targets are pretty limited though. I would say. Just so, Senna has Cleanse, Gragas has Zonias, and um, GP has Oranges. So it's really just okay, oh, as we there's, see. There's the Ash arrow lands. Yeah. Master Yi dives into the back line, but he's getting blown up, absolutely deleted. The Cho'Gath flash alts onto the Senna, but uh, a Gia gets popped, and now Riven is just oh, chasing down ult. the back line members. Ari waiting in the bush, but gets collapsed on by the, the Riven, and that's just an absolute rout. By team, it's an eight. And Foilus's guardian angel really coming in clutch, letting him come back, and having um team Mike's muted overextend for this fight. I mean, they did a great job clawing back 
after being in a 4.5k deficit, we this we might see a game three coming up. And um, observers just told me that we have 100 souls for this Senna. Talk about range. Yeah, Voidless, an absolute monster on this pick, doing so much damage in these fights. Gotta love the late game scaling. All right, red side goes for their pick. Target has GA. Shows how, you know, you, you trust that they're tracking the, the cleanse at least, because it barely was enough, but it just shows how intentional you have to be with the tools you have on red side. Right, and that really is the theme of their comp, I think, is intentionality, because if you see Master E go in like five seconds too early when some key CCs are still up, it's totally useless. And it's that five second difference that could be between totally running it down and a pentakill. Mm -hmm. So blowing the Astral, blowing the Charm, Master E engages, they have to be, they're bouncing on this knife's edge. And we I, see that it's I just... really want to see the Master E hang back in these fights yeah let the ari let the ash go for these picks but then once the riven and the the gragas and the gp are diving onto your back line take that time to just use the fact that you have an insanely high dps character and and chew through that riven while they're while they're overextending get the reset, and then try to take over the fight that way. Don't be diving in with the rest of your team onto the Ari or or on, onto the Senna or whoever they're they're trying to pick off, you know. Play, play a little yeah. deal. That's the advantage of the Shogath is time, right? You have the ability to, like, choose mm -hmm. your time because you have this hugely fed Shogath that can just run interference with the other team and give you some maneuverability. But now that the, the Baron and the Dragon Soul have gone over, it looks like time is running out a bit for the Red Soul. is range, he's just <laughs> whacking on this Oh, Riven falls, oh. though. Twice barely surviving. Array like of that, Hope. The end of this push, perhaps? Or do they still go strong, 45? I think they're strong enough. Look at him just... Oh, he's dead? Oh, no. the Gargo stone plate keeps him alive just barely. Oh and it looks God. like they have total confidence in their Senna here. They're they know that they've voidless. scaled, and they know that the range advantage is huge. And no they ult. grab the inhibitor, no the and then they're done. I cut off Abe, but oh my God. Voidless just chunked Pharaoh over half his health on that one auto attack. This guy is an absolute menace. Someone to really, really fear in these late game team fights. He has that giant slayer, finally able to just beat Shogat down. Yeah, and if this does go to a game three, I'm kind of expecting uh, Mike's muted to pick that blue side and first pick away the Senna. I thought that there wasn't going to be too many contested picks in the series, but from these last two games, it really looks like every game that Senna has picked, she has a huge impact has seraphine had a similar priority uh seraphine no? has not had a similar priority That's it was it was banned actually i think in the first game though yeah i think monkey dongs looked really good on seraphine as we see Riven kind Ash, of caught out yeah. but can get away uses uses those mobility skills gets away there's no ultimates on ash or ari now for this fight and this Baron is dropping really quickly. Red team has to make steal. something happen. Cho'Gath looking Cho for the steal, is but isn't Ashley. quite able to get into it. And that's an easy smite for the Gragas. Gragas cast. Wow. Pushing Cho'Gath Yeah, ulted away. him away. Mm -hmm. Can blue side just run it down mid? Probably. Use that range advantage. And, and we see Mikhail's on Seraphine. It's so hard. For like, they're playing so well around this pick comp from red side. Yeah. Like in the end. Can we get a hover over for exactly how effective this Moonstone Renewer has been on this Seraphine? Four thousand six hundred healing. Yeah. balanced. 
This looks like it's got to be the the last hurrah before oh the Deno just Master destroys their team. Master Yi barely gets to the fountain with his life, but this has to be all she wrote. Ari dies to the Senna on the back line, and now Riven beautifully flashes onto three members of the enemy team and says, "This is how the game is going to end," picking up the the win and pushing this into a one-one series. And we are going to get that game three as it's an apes wins game two. I mean, guys, it has been riveting. It's been a great back and forth game number two as finally it's an ape scales to the point that they want. Their Senna, their Riven, their Seraphine has transitioned really well into the late game. I want to also call out a great game by JTB persevering after the za disastrous level three gank. Um, guys, what do you think that these teams have to do to get that third, uh, to get that third game on their side to finally win this series? Well, it looks like the winning strategy is convincing the enemy team to pick Master Yi. Uh, that has had a hundred win rate <laughs> so far in the series. Um, honestly, I think that. Um, the the Senna is going to be the priority going into this this third game. The pick has looked extremely effective in the hands of both Pharaoh and Voidless, so I would expect that to be a priority. What do you guys? You definitely want to go go blue side for game three if you're uh, Tofu's team. I first pick Senna for sure. Van Riven also. I would keep the Shen ban because uh, I don't know exactly what the bans are, but I assume that's how they forced him onto GP. We saw that was kind of the major weakness. But like you said, center priority, ban Riven, ban Shen. So just looping back to game two, who do you guys think was the MVP of that match? Cardinal. Like, it seems like absolutely. between Cardinal and Voidless, right? I, I think uh, that Voidless was able one. to put in the damage in the late game, but the person who played the largest role in the Crux team fights to bring them back from their four or five thousand gold deficit was Cardinal, able to like I, killing the Master Yi and then flashing onto the back line and uh like cutting through the enemy back line while his team was really far behind in gold. It, yeah. it was absolutely the Riven who I had agree. the biggest role. He's created so much space in those team fights. It was like him versus Ash and Brahm in the back and Ari sometimes. And that clears up so much space for Senna to just have to focus on Choga. So you heard it here from our, from this side. The casters loving Cardinal's Riven pick. Do you think he will get to play Riven for game three? Uh, nope. I actually think that they're going to keep leaving it up. Um, it looks like the ban strategy for Mike's Muted has sort of relied upon not banning either the Zed or the Riven. Um, and I, the I'd three expect bans? Them to uh, I believe their first bans were... Uh, someone, someone refreshed me. <laughs> I forget uh -huh. what it was, but... Um, I believe I it was Leona and Nautilus for the first two, and we did, and we got a Shen um, on uh, band against yeah. JTB. So those were the first three, and then the next two, because those are typically reserved for mid lane, were um, was Diana ban and a um, Zed. Oh wait, he got second rotation ribbon. Yes, yeah. so he got second. That's just very Riven. egregious. I mean, I was going to say, like like you are saying about, well, you leave up Riven and Zed, and it makes him pick one. I think the drop-off from Riven to Zed is actually big enough that I would just ban Riven. And not banning Riven, like banning many other champs before Riven, it seemed just insane. I would like to say that from last season, this man, Cardinal, has played, for his Zed games, he's only played 156 games of Zed last season. He's played over 250 games last season with Riven. His most played champion was Riven from last season. So, Yeah, I mean, I said before the last game that I wanted to see the Riven, 
And now I want to see the Riven Ban. Okay. So we are going to take a quick break, but don't turn off the stream because we will be right back for game number three. We're just taking a quick uh, bathroom and water break, but tune in and don't turn off the channel. And welcome back, audience. You are coming in for game three between Mike Muted and It's an Eighth. This is the final game of the semifinals, and we are eager to see to see exactly who will prevail. Um, my I'm joined by fellow casters Riot, Z Max, Madre the Flame, and Nelson. Um, Guys, who do you think is going to take it today? It's anyone's game, but my money is going to be going to Mike Muted. I think they had strong early leads in the first and second games, and I'm looking for them to repeat that early strategy a third time and close it out. Yeah, I was. Oh, Go I would say now. the. Oh, thank you. I would say uh, my prediction goes to. Uh... I think it's an eighth, honestly. I think that they are running off the high of game number two, and they're going to draft something really spicy in anticipation for this next game. I'm going to go for option C, the team without Master Yi. You know, it's been a, <laughs> it's been a sticking point this whole series. The team with Yi is not the team winning. So I think it really comes down to, to pick and ban. Do you think we're going to see a team with Master Yi, though? Well, then my metric and my heuristic would be useless. Uh, <laughs> I really don't. I hope we don't, and I don't think we will. Um, both these games have... The first one was very one-sided, but the, the competitive game did go to those 5v5s late game. And we saw that the Yi just didn't, didn't fit it well into the comps. It wasn't piloted correctly. So you heard our wonderful caster desk give their opinion on who they think is going to win the game between SKT and TFT. Um, audience, if you guys are on Twitch, you can vote in the chat by doing um, exclamation point, oh, exclamation vote, either SKT or TFT. We have a poll going on. Definitely show your support for the team that you are um, representing here today. Like show them some love um, and we are going to go into pick and ban shortly do we have any highly contested picks for this matchup we Senna. cannot not we cannot mention the Senna like the Senna is going to be a huge pick for either side Senna was on the uh, opposite team of Master Yi in both the first and second games and uh, I think that it's going to be first picked or either um, either first picked or banned in this third draft. Yeah, so we're looking to um, Tofu's team, Mike Muted, as the losing team to have side selection. And for that reason, the Senna, hopefully they pick blue side. I think we're all in agreement that that's the right call. The clear number one priority pick. Are there any other highly contested picks or bans that we must do for this matchup? I know you guys had mentioned Cardinals Riven, but is there anything else that you, you think either team should be out on the lookout for? Yeah, I think after last game, especially Cardinals Riven, it's got to go. His next best is probably Zed. And while Zed does have the ability to shut down one player on the other team, I don't think it has the same 
1v5 potential. Uh, and then we're also th talking about the Monkey Dong support pool getting pinched. I don't know if either of you want to talk about that. Idris, take it away. Monkey Dong <laughs> expert. I mean, I I know that we were going back and forth on this. I don't think there is a ton of value in trying to uh, pinch Monkey Dong off of the Seraphine, even though it has a large presence in team fights, the W and the Ultimate. I think that it honestly is a vulnerable pick to be playing in a lane, and it is a possibility that it can get exploited. So I don't think that it's worth the same ban priority as maybe just like taking away Ramus or taking away the, the Yumi. But um, I know that you disagreed, so what's, what's your take on this, Eric? Oh, and we are getting into the draft here. You know, I, we so, like you're saying, we've seen the Yumi pick, the Yumi ban, both games of the series, away from Monkey Dong. Oh, and so we'll see if we see that again. So far, it is Nautilus and Leona, the same bans for Tofu's team, but we see a change up from the red side. Mike muted, or not Mike muted. Uh, the other team going for the Senna ban because they are on red side. Right, there's the river ban that we were clamoring for, and we do see the strategy of sort of dropping those bans that are being aimed at Monkey Dong 123 because honestly, this player is so new that the difference in comfort between the champions that he's played, you know, five times versus two times, uh, I mean, I, I don't think it's worth like the, the marginal utility of burning those bans. Wait, hold on. It's an eighth of Greece. I would actually, you know, I would actually argue against that. I think Monkey Dong Seraphine is a force to reckon with. I don't know if you have seen some of those scrim matches, but this guy has landed three, four, five man Seraphine ults, really changing the pace and flow of a team fight. Um, it's even when being targeted and having the jungler camp that bottom lane, like, this I don't know. This guy is just so effective on that pick. I think it would be foolish for it's an eighth not to either steal the Seraphine or ban it. Yeah, let's let's keep an eye on the Seraphine. You see, kind of a complete turn, uh, unexpected. But the first pick, Hecarim, which I believe has zero percent presence this series. Nope, it was banned in both it's games. It's been banned for it's both games. Banned. So we do mm -hmm. know that twice is a mean Hecarim. That Senna ban, we're leaving that for him. And we see uh, a possible Seraphine pickup for It's an Eighth. That's my bad there. So that's the, the cost of the Senna. Yep. Um, giving them uh, the Hecarim over. So they're not playing Master Yi. So one point for the blue side. Unless they like run it top or something. But it's answered by the Seraphine. Talk, talking about top lane, are we going to see Green Epic unleashed? Will he be able to play something other than a mom, other than a tank? Let him let him carry, since he has had such a stellar performance in both game one and two. Hey, hey, He's had a stellar performance, so just keep doing it. Yeah, the ben, we, worked out twice. Go for the, the three-peat. I think the team went to uh, Pet Supply Plus, you know, to get that nice diamond collared uh, <laughs> leash, you know? <laughs> and uh, I think we're going to see that leash showing up in this game right here. Yeah. So, uh... you know, you're hearing it here once again. The caster, the caster desk is uh, going to leash Green Epic back onto tank duty. But will, but, you know, the final call doesn't come to us. The final call comes from his actual team, from probably his captain. Um, will SK Telecom unleash the beast, unleash the silver smurfer? Will we see Jaquan, the green epic, on something else? I like this Kaisa pick into the Hecarim. Uh, Kaisa dives in. All he needs is one auto attack to just reposition to remove the Hecarim off him. So I do like this bot lane right now coming from Kaisa Seraphine. Yeah, I I do have a little concern with like Kaisa usually wants to be paired with someone with a melee with hard CC, someone to proc her passive for her. I feel like the Seraphine, it's a good denial pick, but it might come at the cost of some of that bot lane aggression. 
Oh, and an early Anivia pick coming for SK Telecom. You know, this has been traditionally a second round ban for, against him, but they are confident that he can carry even, even with a blind pick. So I think Anivia has been banned on against him for so long now that they, yeah, he wants to blind pick Anivia. So I'm excited to see what the counter is for this the mid lane matchup. I mean, I, I want to see the Zed come out. Maybe Cassidan? I, I think Cassidan will be really good into the Anivia. I think we saw It's an Eighth run the Cassidan yesterday. Yeah. Uh, he. He ran a cast in, into into an Anivia and just dumpstered yeah. him, right? Exactly. Oh, but a Lucian pick, you know, that means if they pick Cassidant, they could actually rotate Lucian into the mid lane and have Anivia go bot. Since no, no. Tofu, no, Tofu's not no. playing Lucian. I hope for their sake. No, no, no. Pharaoh no, no, can no. go mid lane. Uh, yeah, Tony plays Anivia Lucian bot. Mid. This is the this is the benefit of um, Mike's muted in that Tofu Pharaoh and. Um, SK Telecom 2 one are very flexible in exactly which lane they can go. Blind That's pick a good call. Interesting point. Oh, Nivea bot great seems pick little... for JTB. Usually that Shen has been banned against them, but, you know, banning the Riven has freed the Shen. Oh, it looks like it's an ape <laughs> taking the leash out themselves. <laughs> Reverse leash. <laughs> Whoa, Ben, the Olaoi into the Shen. I mean, that's one of Shen's worst mashup is, is into Olaoi. So they respect I, I have to imagine. Epic. I have to imagine that the next ban is going to be a Darius then, right? Probably. Putting the man in shackles. It's an eighth. You know, putting tears in Green Epic's eyes. I think it's an eighth needs to ban the Nautilus. I think the Nautilus ap applies a really good setup for the Lucian and Hecarim just for bot lane ganks and also Nautilus in team fights. Nautilus is already banned. Oh, um, Nautilus is banned? Oh, shoot. I did not see that Mike's, part. Right. Mike muted ban Leona and Nautilus all three games. A targeted, um, a target towards Entropy in... Oh, um, Batcaster didn't read that. I think the Lucian needs a really good engaged champion. He needs a really good engaging support. So they see the cast in the band. That was obvious. I mean, think about what they've played Braum both games. Tofu's team. Yeah, I would. And I'd expect Lucian. You would. Yeah, you gotta expect the Lucian Braum a classic combo. We'll see if Redside thinks it's worth banning away or whether they want to keep. Um, I don't know, layering on the leashes. I feel like our analogy is kind of suffering at if, this point. But if the if the Darius is left up, you know what's the point of the Alawi ban? Those are both picks that. Uh, Green Epic is very familiar with and picks that punish the Shen really hard in that lane. Good point. I feel like he definitely is better on Alawi than Darius, but maybe it's the same effect. We see the cast and ban, so I think it was really a smart point about the flex pick, um, but it seems like it wasn't what Blue Side was going for. Mm -hmm. If they're banning out cast and you know, it, it shows that they're not thinking about that flex potential. They don't and want to put Anivia in the bot lane. We do have that Darius ban and a quick Zed, Zed ban right? yeah. for its Cardinal. What can Cardinal play now? So Zareth uh, ranges Anivia pretty well, right? I don't want to see Cardinal to on Zareth. Before. Let's, let's not see a Zareth. I think that the champion doesn't have a lot of pressure in the lane, can't clear the waves as fast as Nivea can. And that was a big issue for them in the control mage sort of mirror game one. And Tofu, Tofu just showed that he's able to translate that wave pressure into game pressure. So I don't think they should opt into that a second time. So what's left here? I've seen Cardinal play Oriana. That's one possibility. He played Di uh, Diana one game, but I heard from a an inside source that apparently his team picked it for him. Oh, yes, wow. and the Diana what's pick. The, what's so the inside source here? Anecdote, they, <laughs> they just assumed that he could play Diana, and he had never played Diana, and they just picked it for him because it's a good matchup, and he proceeded to not do very well with it. Um, wow. He doesn't play the <laughs> So we see clearly either there's a disconnect in um, 
the memory of the red side or cardinal has you know his ego is, is coming to the fore and he, he believes he can you know hey, so he while, while there is that story um you know apparently there were rumors to the contrary because sk telecom's team has banned diana for both games so it must be formidable or we wouldn't have seen it banned. There's the Braum locked in, yeah. as expected. As rounding expected. out you're right, you're the, right. the Lucian Braum. So, who do you think is going to be in top lane? I would... I just hope they don't pick Kled. <laughs> yeah, I know Green Epic himself has talked about the poor matchup there. And that's why Red Side to get away with banning only two of um, his three potential carries. They really want him to choose Kled. Yeah, looking back at actually the match history, um, looks like Cardinal on Diana actually went nine two and seventeen on Diana. Okay. So maybe a bit of sandbagging from him. Can you do uh, Urgo into Shun? Yeah, I would say so. Yeah, it's it's okay, but I don't think that Urga is pick Cho'Gath, right? The yeah, they're gonna have to give him Cho'Gath. I think Cho'Gath would be the best pick here for them. Yep. Yep. And there it is. And back, back on Chogaf duty, Green Epic is, you know, he might be a Jaquan bit Jaquan howling in rage. I think it's an eighth needs to choose like a Gragas. Just to, like... Not Master Yi. Gragas would be have, fine. They have plenty of AP damage. I actually want to see a J4. I want to see um, an AD, but tanky jungler who who sets up a lot of um, engage, who does a lot of fights, doing roams, early yeah. game. Yeah, Gragas makes the Merc Treads value a little too high. Yeah, I so I want to see a J4. I want to see a Kane. That would be great. A Red Kane. Kane, Kane would, Red Kane would be fantastic. Red Kane would be, would be, really, good. Yeah. Red Kane would be really good. Red Kane uh, in the group stage against my team. But I do say J4 because Let's Minkai see, gonna is pick... already oh, now a J4 player, but an Olaf into that a works. Not wall. locked in, not locked in, but it's hovering. I think it's, it's bad against in. Anivia, yeah. right? Yes, yeah. I agree. It's kited very easily. Okay. I... Anivia is one of the only champions in the game that's actually able to peel herself off from the Olaf. So, so now that we see the picks... <sighs> Um, do you guys have any predictions for who is right. expected to win? Oh. Who do you think did the better pick in ban? I'd like to go Ben, go first. Oh man, you're just <laughs> you're just gonna take the opposite of whatever I say. I swear. I mean, I think that this draft favors um, SKT. I think that. Lucian Braum is a potent lane. Hopefully, they'll be able to push out the Seraphine Kaisa. Just in general, I think they have advantage through their champions in all three lanes, and they've shown that they have enough macro sense to turn that lane pressure into objective pressure, into like game pressure. And so, I, I mean, I, I think that they'll be able to do that and get another one of their early game advantages in this game. Now, should you decimate him or should I? I'll I'll decimate guys, him. I th I think right. it's gonna be it's an eighth because of the fact that uh, I'm looking at the engage on it's an eighth basically the Diana followed by Shen alt and then the follow up is basically Seraphine alt and then them just rushing into you. Um, I don't think that it's an eighth can deal with this hardcore engage before they blow. They're gonna blow someone up basically. And if they blow up the Lucian or Nivea, then they don't have enough consistent damage in order to win that team fight. So I would say it's a Nath has the edge in team fights. And I would say for the laning phase right now, I think Olaf's going to power form faster than the Hecarim and provide stronger early game ganks. And I think that, I honestly think that Diana is going to beat this Nivea pre six. So uh, that's my prediction. Yeah. I think the mid jungle matchup is definitely the most volatile and where. This, this game is hinging. You're right. If the red team is able to make it into the mid game relatively unscathed, like even or ahead in gold, then they have the ability to absolutely run down their opponents around objectives. 
but I I'm really looking at the the blue team to find that advantage in the laning phase where I think they have the advantage. All right. Well, here's why Ben's wrong and red side is going to win. So first of all, the bot lane Lucian Brom, while synergizing well with itself, it actually takes a surprising amount of coordination and playing to strength of and level power spikes that I don't think blue side's bot lane has. See, this is like his third game of Braum. And the Kai'Sa uh, Seraphine, the double ranged matchup is actually just naturally advantageous. And I think we'll just win lane against Lucian Braum. I also think top lane, Shen is a huge upgrade for red side. And there's a reason it's always banned against them. It lends itself so well to full map play and he, uh, he pilots it so much better than the GP, which you saw last game. Um, and yeah, this Olaf, we talked about Kane being a good pick, but Olaf gives them that nice bridge to the late game that I think will just take them over the line. So I think red side, Smurf draft, I think they're going to take it away. Okay, viewers, um, as we see the picks and bans, don't forget to make some noise and support the team of your choice by voting in chat. Do hash oh do exclamation point vote SKT or TFT to show your support. We will close voting at the start of the game. see the players just picking the champions that they've already gone through the draft of. Do you care to revise your statements, Emax? This is your last chance to retain nope. a shred of credibility. Oh. Nope, I've been wrong twice, and I'm down to be wrong three times in a row. Okay. Guys, Do you? what do you think is the win con needed, to, um, needed for each side? Like, what does SKT got to do to win. What does TFT got to do on their side? So these fights are probably going to uh, pivot around the engage from the red side, right? The Kaisa, Seraphine, Diana, Shen, Olaf just running at their opponents. If they can kill enough priority targets and get enough of a fight advantage, during that engage, they'll win the fight. And if they're not able to get that, they end up only maybe getting some chunk damage in and then getting kited out. The Anivia, you know, Cho'Gath, Braum will be able to come back through and, and clean things up. So I think we just need to watch like the start of these fights and how coordinated the red team can be. Yeah. I think those zoning tools are really important for the blue side, right? Anivia and Cho'Gath. Like, I'm envisioning a scenario where we see, like, Diana ult in, uh, e in and hit a big ult, but Anivia Wall does go up and Olaf just can't follow if he doesn't have flash. So I do see, like, you know, some potential advantages for blue side in team fights, and they really have to play around those, those two zoning champions. I think that Cho'Gath is kind of useless in this draft because, um, for the what's going to start these team fights is Diana engaging or Olaf engaging. And as soon as Diana engages, she uses all her abilities, Q, E, and W, and, and R, too. And Cho'Gath, as soon as he throws that silence, he's going to hit, like, Olaf and Diana. And Diana doesn't care. She's auto-attacking with her passive, and Olaf is CC immune. So I don't think uh, it's all about just holding the silence for um, Green my, Epic. My counter to that is that Cho'Gath is really good against Olaf because he just chomps him when he goes mm. in, right? The big counter to Olaf is if he's just dies when he runs in and Cho'Gath is really good at providing that extra bit of damage to burn through the love. Yeah. Okay. I mean, oh, go ahead, sorry, Anna. sorry to cut you off, Eric. But uh, before we continue on, I just want to say a quick message from our title sponsors, Drop Pod. Drop Pod is a Williams alumni founded social media and gaming startup centered around making it easier to connect with friends to play online multiplayer games. Y'all have heard me say this time and time again, but one part gaming community and one part social media app, Drop Pod just launched and is open is in open beta. Drop Pod hopes that the Williams Network will be a major part of its community, so please go check them out in the Apple App Store and Google Play Stores. And we're gonna just drop a quick ad for them. <laughs>
Okay, and welcome back. Um, as we load into this rift, or as we are going to load into this rift, do we expect do we expect any early game plans or jungle uh, ganking patterns for either Hecarim or Olaf? Take it away, Ben. Um, if I'm master, <laughs> if I'm looking at uh, this from the perspective of the Hecarim, I want to start topside, and I want to try to get an early gank onto the Seraphine Kaisa, double ranged matchup. They're probably going to be pushing in their opponents, and their champions are extremely vulnerable in the early game. So from the Hecarim's perspective, I'm looking bot. From the Olaf's perspective, uh, I think Shen has uh, a lot of setup, and you can definitely kill a, a Cho'Gath in the early game if you're able to just dodge the Q. So I'd be looking towards the, the top side. Uh, Hecarim could also look to take the 2v2, but uh, I, I would opt for the bot lane focus. Yeah, I agree with that. Um, I think Shen might have good setup, but I would like to see this Olaf sometimes shadowing bot lane. I think you're right that Hecarim will be passing there. I think the game might be decided there. If Voidless and Entropy can just bully out the Lucian Braum, they'll have a great time of it. They'll have Pryo. Olaf can start stacking these drags. Super strong early. And Red Side will have a clear win con. Yeah, all right. Well, thank you for that uh, biased take, bot lane player. But, um... <laughs> I mean... <laughs> what, what do we... Yeah, mid lane... No, I, I do yeah. think that that would be a, a smart way for Olaf to play this. So Anivia should have prior like post six, but early on, I think Nell, you're talking about how Diana yeah. seems favored. It I, is I, still I, a ranged into melee matchup though, so Anivia can get pressure, and the Q is very threatening. Yeah, I really like how both supports took ignite in this matchups. They're looking for blood. You know, the problem's like I don't need to take uh, exhaust anymore. Exactly, and... I am looking forward to that. You know. Uh, as a support main myself, you gotta love it when supports take that initiative. We're all about bloodthirsty. And I'm expecting that cheese right now. I expect both sides to go into the enemy jungle and expect that cheesy level one play. Ah uh, yes, Nelson and his uh very bad French accent is infamous. Really. Yeah, infamous <laughs> uh, is craving for some pepper jack. Do you guys think we're going to see some level 1 shenanigans as these teams are clamoring for that win? I really hope that we do, given the champions that they picked, but they had similar champs last game and we didn't see any shenanigans, although blue yes, team... I, yes, it is. Yes, there is. Mwah. And we always say that um, Seraphine best level 1 champ, but mm -hmm. blue side's level 1 is pretty nasty. Yeah, blue side definitely has a lot of very one. good level one champions. Uh, oh, and they are all grouped. Now, Kaisa going to spot this invade out really early. Should be able to just walk away. And now I really want to see either the Olaf or the Shen go and get, get a ward down on the far side of the map. You saw all five <laughs> members. And they tried, but, but oh, they Inertia failed. is a strong force, and they do not <laughs> move from their spots. You know, it's like a local rel ult at their position. They cannot move their champions. They're respecting the invisible barriers. Yes, and, uh, you know, or maybe they've read too many Wall Street bets, and they've learned to hold, hold their position. Diamond hands from the red side. You know, yeah, they've learned both... that it's the winning strat. <laughs> Looks like both bot laners on red side use their ward, which I think is a pretty big mistake. Like they're just, it's the kind of automatic response where it's like, oh, I see them, I'll just put down my ward. But for both of them to do it, gonna be a little exposed. That's as a, a bot lane it. expert, you know, I can. Okay. Con contrary to what I predicted, we see Hecarim starting bot side and moving up towards the top side. So. Uh, whereas the Olaf is starting topside and heading towards bot side, so complete opposite of what I had predicted. Blue side's gonna get Cho'Gath another 4k gold league and, and lose the game. <laughs> a standard play for this team. Put him on a leash, then feed him all the biscuits. 
I mean, it's not a bad leash, to be honest. You know? This oh, team. and looks like there were some early trades from the double range lane. Uh, Pharaoh definitely getting low, being forced to burn his potion and still landing at a, a low HP total. This is the yeah. thing about the Lucian Braum lane is like, you know, you have that great ability to stack Braum passive, but you need to be level two or level, level two. three. Yep. Yeah, and against this range but matchup, you're never going to hit two first. Yep. And now they're and too passive. low to pressure at all. Kaisa has the advantage too with her passive, you know, so level one trades is not good to take with Kaisa. So, bot lane's uh, getting punished right now. Yeah, we could even see Olaf path for a dive bot lane. I don't, I doubt this team will try that just because that's, can often go awry, but definitely an option. Yeah, they don't have any eyes on the Hecarim yet, although Hecarim did just reveal that he was topside. So maybe. I don't think no, there's any way like they do it. Hmm. At this level, I think coordinating dives like that, it's it can be really good, but it can also go really terribly and tilt your team. So mm -hmm. I think it's fine. Interesting, Hecarim opted to skip the Scuttle Crab and immediately reset for a Longsword. Yeah, do you and think good, that's just uh... like not tracking Olaf? Or do you think that's... like Because it seems like a big mistake to not just trade Scuttles. Um, yeah, I have... Uh... <laughs> I'm not sure what, what that's about. It's a very farm efficient path. You can see that he gets right back in onto... Uh, his side of the jungle and is going to be clearing these raptors right after they spawn. But it definitely feels like a missed opportunity to not take that scuttle crab when he was in the area. Hmm. Olaf, Olaf heading into a double yeah. scuttle. He's happy. Spotted, well, spotted out though. Cho'Gath in a vulnerable position. Let's see if he respects the Olaf showing on his ward. Oh, Hecarim, what are you doing, baby? Walking oh. a bit too far up. He's getting the ward, okay. Oh, I thought he was going to throw into the back. Yeah, so, so green epic should know that off here, the wave is pushing towards him. Totally fine. Let's stay back. What minute do you think... Uh, who's going to get the red trinket first? Uh, red side or blue side? <laughs> I'm saying no red trinkets this entire game. That's my bet. Is this uh, uh, a recurring theme? Yeah, junglers don't get uh, red trinkets, and they do dragon, and then they die. <laughs> so <laughs> the junglers in in this lobby certainly like to walk over wards on their way to gank. Mm -hmm. Whoa! I thought we wanted to keep this stream positive. No flaming. Of course, it's not People flaming. It's more just test. the it's... place itself. You know. It's more of a criticism of something, you know. We've that, all been yeah, there. I'm sure they're great people. I'm sure they're nice people. They just don't buy Red Trigo when they should. They just like being seen. They just, yeah, yeah like being in that, that public limelight. They're honest people. They don't want to sneak around. Ooh, Anivia Q goes uh -oh. wide. Anyway, this oh. could be good. Here's the Braum. The Braum Lucian the combination kind of forces flush. That is a bold flash from the Braum, overextending. Oh no. Yeah, kind of just losing a flash for nothing there. But overall, it seems like the pressure works out in favor of the Braum Lucian lane. Although now Lucian is left with no mana, and both junglers should be eyeing this, oh, this bot easy. lane. Oh my god, ease in, but gets hit by the root. Has the flash, cues in, but a trade from the ADCs. First blood. Oh no, the Seraphine picks up the Lucian kill. So first blood over to Lucian. Yeah, and honestly, really impressed by Fire Resolution. Um, I've seen him play it a bunch, and he looks very comfortable on it. Oh, as Olaf comes in with the Shen. Olaf and Shen come in. Braum absolutely dead here. Twice walks away, and that's a, a clean TP one for zero. Shen has to TP top up to this lane, otherwise he's going to miss a farm. That's what Shen main say. You just oh, but they want to like the he's, dragon. he's sticking around for the dragon first. Yeah, he I don't to help drag. Yeah, I don't. So mid does have prio, which is why I think this is maybe uh -huh. necessary for the Shen. Mm -hmm. But in general, yeah. it, you know, you can kind of tell from the the rhythm of those plays that blue side's going to probably give drag. So I would yeah, like to right. be a kind of a mid max here. Like you're saying, but if, I'll just if the if the Shen does TP top, then that opens up Cho'Gath's option to TP to the dragon. Also, so that's true, something true. to mind. That's very true. So, 
This is a couple waves, but again, we're feeding biscuits, but the dog is on a leash, though. <laughs> <laughs> Unclear how much those two waves will do for this show, guys. We'll see. As we reset now, and this Kaisa has a huge CS lead. Well, the wave's crashing, so we'll see. Uh, should even itself out, but this range matchup is really strong. I think it might swing at, at six with the Bromalts. What do you guys think? Oh, Seraphino and oh Hecarim are... coming in for a gank, oh charging up his E, seeing battle, if he can battle. land the ult. The yeah. ult pushes the Seraphine away, easily flashes out of that one, and the play just fizzles out. They didn't keep track of the summer spells. They should have known that Kai'Sa blew flash, and they should have focused the Kai'Sa. And you were right, uh, Eric. It was a bad ult. It didn't hit the Kai'Sa or knock her toward the... Uh, your team, yeah. their team. With that, with that mm -hmm. directional fear, if he just kept running, he had the boosted move speed and ult behind Kaisa. Like said, mm -hmm. no flash, easy kill. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Blotch execution. Just a, a little bit further needed on that ultimate. Well, it's definitely watching. the right idea, I think, Ekrim, like camping this bot lane. Um, we do see CS disparities across pretty much all lanes. Olaf. Oh, Olaf up. looking for the gank. Now being spotted by the Cho'Gath, but he's Shen definitely has out of position. Oh, he... Has the flash, burns it immediately, knows what he has to do, doesn't get tagged by the X. Good flash right there. We've been seeing so many times where people hold the flash and they end up dying while flashing. So I really like the mm -hmm. flash right there by Green Epic. Yep. Agreed. Agreed. So like I was saying, we see some CS disparities. Bot lane's about back to even, but blue side actually... Top lane, about 30 CS. Oh, Lucian, oh. bring out the, the ultimate. Eing in, but Otto's the minion, and Seraphine just sneaks out of that one. Yeah, uh, really, I think really Braum might have been able to ignite. I don't know if it was come off cooldown, but I think Braum should have ignited there. Yeah, it was definitely a, a close play and a very aggressive look from the Lucian, which I love to see, but just a little bit of missed execution on that one. Yeah, like, yeah. you know, the solution's definitely... Lucian Braum is, is playing well. Here comes the Olaf. Olaf. Yeah, uh, Olaf Shen coming in for the for the gank. Um, Shen is fighting the Cho'Gath. Two TP's TP. TP. in coming in from blue side, and red team just walks away. Oh, and a wow. flash wall from the Anivia isn't going to find uh, anything at all. A rupture, but they're really overreaching here. Five members of blue team committing to the bot side and getting nothing. <laughs> No dragon up either, so there's no like conciliatory prize for the blue side. It's just like the observer yeah. showing free free ways for Shad, free ways for Diana. And Shad really needs that too to get back into this game with the CS. And show Diana, so a uh, free reset for her. But yeah, well, seeing that play right there is nothing more disheartening. You saw the desperation too when they realized they TP too too early. Nivia flashes, tries to wall off the Olaf, but but misses the Q, and then Shogath lands the rupture, but it was a little too late. You know, he was Olaf was under tower, so. And even little... even if the Olaf ends up in a bad position, still holding on to both an ultimate and a flash, so Olaf really not in any danger there at all. No, diamond hands from the Olaf right there. Okay, so <laughs> looks like Hacker is getting on to the Rift Herald here. Um, and Olaf is walking over to contest it. Uh, Anivia has the GP. priority. So does Cho'Gath. Hecarim pulling it out. Gonna continue hitting. Oh. Anivia trying to... Oh, the gets the Olaf alt. And this should be Rift Herald over to Blue Team. Yeah, we'll see if Red Team calls to just give it. Looks like that is the call. Getting some push on bot wave, but... Yeah, nice, nice zoning by Nivea where that Diana can't be there. Um, I would have loved to see a TP from Diana, maybe, to mid, and Pinsir if you call Olaf to oh, go. Oh, nice maybe. cancel on the Kaisa recall by Lucian with the W. Also, I want to mention that Hecarim has Red Trinket. You can't see it, but he's the first person to get Red Trinket, so props to him. Yeah, we got a dragon fight. Coming up, let's see if the red team can continue stacking these dragons or if uh, blue team can use the pressure that they have from bot lane to secure this one. Yeah, so you yeah. see Hecarim topside. He's clearing down. Olaf also going to be off a reset. 
as Lucian is playing really, really far into the turret. <laughs> I don't know about yeah, that Cho one. Cho'Gath's spotting out the Olaf on the top side, so Lucian knows that he's not under threat right here. Feels like he can play very far up. I want to see some TP, TP plays by Diana and Shen right now. They both have TP. Shen Double has all TP also. advantage. Yeah. Yeah, we, you know, it's not even hard to track because it's a very salient event of like blue team and team both of their TPs. Um, so it should be obvious to red side that they should look for these. Even in bot lane, like when Lucian's there, if you can just Seraphine ult him and get a, get a Shen ult, like you can create a lot of pressure. Well, here we go. This is going to be one of the game deciding fights right here, I would say, for the next 10 minutes. Whoever wins this dragon fight, in my opinion. Um, both sides feel like strong enough to fight each other, so. It's a 5v4, though. No Cho'Gath. No Cho'Gath TP, so. That's true. So they... as, for him as, to long as, as long as Cho'Gath keeps pressure on the Shen, he should be able to. Oh, but to they get found the a cancel. pick and they got oh, a pick I'm on running Anivia. towards the Anivia. Anivia forced into the egg and given over for free. That's going to be the dragon picked up for Red Team. A you know, really good pick found by the Diana. I think Diana found Q QE, ulted, and then they caught the Anivia. And then Olaf and Diana ran her down. So, mispositioning on Anivia's part, and a free dragon given to Red Side. And it's going to be that Ocean Soul. So, very scary dragon stacking that has been started. Yeah. So we're going to get a very, very early Ocean Soul right now, probably around 21 minutes or 26 minutes Ocean Soul, correct? Mm -hmm. So they get, yeah, they get both drags like right when they come up. Um, we yep. see that and if you're burning flash ball lane, it's just so punishing when you're Nivia against uh, Diana Olaf, you really need that summoner spell as your only piece of mobility. I'm going to watch so Hector right now. Okay. Uh, Looks Hacker like and Luke a little behind. But they shouldn't need a Braum in order to make this play. Oh, Shen Some far ult, up. Shen has not ulted yet. Seraphine ults. There's the Shen ult. A little bit late. Isn't able to save the Seraphine. Kaisa dives in, gets the kill, but it's going to get traded back. Should be an easy Lucian pick up e. for Lucian. There it is. The late Shen ult. We saw so Shen was channeling his recall and really wanted to finish. Um, before he ulted. Now Olaf looking for the counter punch top lane onto the Cho'Gath. Cho'Gath has his flash up again. Let's see if they can uh, finish off this kill. But right. watch Diana Olaf though. Is unstoppable. Doesn't pick up the egg. Cho'Gath still has flash. That really holding off the flash this time. And gets taken down. So this is sort of the opposite scenario of. Yeah, but watch when Nivia took, took first tower though. So there's a give and take. True. And Olaf and trading his turret. Flash. Yeah, do they even they don't even get top turret, so that's two turrets for the blue side. Definitely winning that trade super hard. Mm -hmm. Um we saw a couple of miss executions. Shen needs to just ult right away to get to the play faster as Diana going in on Anivia, but knows that Jungle is close like, probably. Yeah, that that play's just gonna fizzle out. No one um, wants to take anything with the map's so dark. But yeah, Shen needs to be there right away, and then the Kaisa ult in. You saw he ulted behind uh, mm -hmm. for the last hit, just ult in front so you can run away. Because you're never going to continue that play after Shen ult he is um, cancelled by the target dying. So they're saying they're bot lane to the top lane right now. So this will be yeah, interesting. They, they want to knock down that last outer turret. Yeah. Yeah, I like that rotation actually. The Brom's not there in time to push the deterrent, so Lucian has to play back. I need to be cognizant that you only have about, I'd say, a minute and a half until you want to start setting up for this dragon and and have your bot lane be in the area. Because mm -hmm. I wouldn't want to give red side sold point. It just makes every so dragon a coin flip, yeah. Yep. So let's, let's keep an eye on whether they rotate down uh, in time. Looking at these builds right here before this next dragon, is there anything come out to your mind right now? Um, there is one difference in uh, the mythic completions. We can see that there's no mythic on only the Shen and the Braum. So those two characters uh, behind their respective opponents in itemization. 
other than that, nothing nothing really comes to mind. Hmm. Oh, aggressive turret. taunt. A good taunt onto the Lucian. Uh, looks like he is able to get away, throws an alt back, pushes the Shan off the turret, and is going to collect oh, that one. Oh, Kai sent Olaf Roman top. Hacker in the shadow. Seraphine also in that top lane stack. But there's no play to be found. I mean, it's interesting to see both teams play as top side. It seems like they're, I guess, a lot of time to reset, but it really is important to get first to that drag setup vision. Yep, mm -hmm. one minute till dragon right now, and this is going to be very contingent for Mike's muted to get this dragon. To prevent Maybe this a, shadowing the Cho'Gath here, putting down some deep vision. Um, a very good ward to help them prepare for this dragon. Let's see if it gets sweeped out. So everyone's TP is up. Hacker and Path's top. Looks like they're going to trade Rift, I guess. That's a big call. When uh, that does the not up. seem like what you want to be doing. Yeah, Red's, Red, team, Red team has everyone on the same page. They're Hacker saying everyone down. Hecarim absolutely can make it there in time. He has the moves. Look at the bot lane. Like, they reset oh, so late. Definitely too late to this play. Red, red side needs to just force this. At least mm -hmm. get the vision. Make him come into you. Like, we see the good zonal control from, from Cho'Gath and Start Anivia. The dragon. It's hard to run in with it, right? It's not, you want them to run into you. This comp. Yep. Pulling out the dragon, and now they're starting it. So red team has the positional advantage. So we got flanking from bottom, and they've been Lucian and Hecarim so from top lane. The flank, but They're getting pins are here. Way away from yeah. everyone. Anivia throws an alt down onto the dragon. Olaf taking a ton of damage. Seraphine alt hits three. Dragon goes over to the red team, but now it looks like Diana is in a risky position. Flashes out, gets to safety, and Hecarim trying to chase it down, but. I don't think there's much more to this play. At the end of the day, it's just one for they got dragon, so that's a totally win for worth. yeah, hundred yep. percent worth. They didn't want to fight. Olaf's like, I'm trying to get this dragon. I'm gonna stay on this dragon, just keep distracting them. And he got the smite secure on the dragon, gave his mm -hmm. life for it, but it's so worth for this ocean soul. He's gonna lose. They're gonna lose tier two bot tower, but at the end of the day, uh, these dragons now are gonna be coin flips. They have to fight every dragon now. Yep. So. They are going to be coming into the fourth dragon fight with this gold lead, though. So we'll see if they can really leverage that to actually take a fight and be in the correct position. Well, the problem is, though, is one of the scary parts about these uh, these soul point dragons is that you cannot die within one minute of the dragon. You know, mm -hmm. you're trying to set up vision for these dragons. You're trying to set up like wards and position, and it just takes one pick. You know, one pick on the support on the AD. God help if it's the jungler. And then you basically secured yourself this dragon, you know? Mm -hmm. Or force the enemy team to run into you suicidally to prevent you from getting Ocean yeah. Soul. Right. So force like, like some like flash Cho'Gath play or, or some it's something. It's totally desperate. possible for Blue Side to leverage this gold advantage and contest every Drake, but right, it just gives so much less margin for error like Nell's talking about. Mm -hmm. Um I do think, yeah, like Cho'Gath is another factor with his ult to secure Drake. I don't know, does Cho'Gath always just outsmite you as a jungler? Or... Yeah, Cho'Gath ult will always do more damage than smite. Okay, maybe it going does. for a pick here. Oh no. Twice the getting taunt. Taunt, out. taunt landing onto the Hecarim, but the Anivia is able to kite Cho'Gath in an awkward position. Wall comes through, kind of. Putting Kaisa a wasn't there. on the play, and uh, everyone walks away. They didn't have the Kaisa there for the consistent damage. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I would love to see a rotate mid from red side here, get the inner track. Maybe pressure that outer turret, as you see they're going for it. And watch here. this bot lane. This bot lane's farm right here, so they're, it's going to force the Cho'Gath to go bot right now, because the bot lane's pushed. If all your lanes are pushed, you just... It's easier life for you, basically. So I think you just have to give. Oh, Hecarim looking yeah. for something, but yeah, just nothing. Nothing to be found. They say goodbye to their uh, outer turret mid, and it's a absolutely free turret for red side. I just have to commend uh, just the sheer like vision coverage on uh, it's an eighth. 
you know? Mm-hmm. Oh, well, they have more pink wards, I would say, but they have the ri- the river. I think the biggest thing they have right now is the river coverage. And I think the river coverage is more critical than, um, again, the deep wards at the moment. But they have to kill, kill that tier one in order to now go into the enemy jungle. So expect to see more wards into the enemy jungle now that the tier one mid is gone. So. Yep. Yeah, I think overall this this just feels like a very high level game. Like we see a lot of good proactive plays. We see like pushing for vision, good rotations, and I guess it's clear to me that when all is on the line, both teams want something solid. They want to be in control, and we see you know like gold advantage trade for stacking drakes, which is very um, topical for all League of Legends, especially at at higher levels. So you know I'm just Happy to be here, <laughs> scouting out my next opponent. I think both these teams look look very strong. I love how all the team members on both sides have pink wards. You know, they heard our casters, they heard our casting, and they took the advice of just buying pink wards. I, you know? I think something that's really important to track here, uh, going into this fourth dragon fight, is we can see the effect of this gold lead. On the blue side, second item completions in for almost every champion whereas there are almost no second items completed on the red team. How That's do you guys big. feel about about this Kai'Sa building Less Whisper right now? Uh, we bad. saw this in the first game as well, right? Um, knowing so he's that... not even getting... I guess, okay, so it gets EQ Evolve. I see the point. But it's just Cho'Gath, really, that's stacking armor. Yeah. And in a team fight, the great thing about Kai'Sa is you can just dive their back line, right? You can like, ult in off of Diana ult. And at that point, you have like you a Last AP. Whisper hitting Lucian and hitting Nivea. It's like, it's not worth it. Rather, be going to, towards Collector. Will right. Minjbae run Lucian in there with ult? This time, has yes. the... For the steal. Oh, yeah, Olaf ulting in, Olaf has the shot on him. Cho easily secures the dragon. Huge ult right there. Ult for the back line, but a big Seraphine ult, and now we're seeing that the fight is being kited out by the blue team. Flash Diana taunt. and Akron going down a beautiful flash taunt by the Shen. Looks like it's going to be able to pick up the Anivia. Well, right. the the egg, but Lucian is free firing on the back line, picks up the Seraphine. Watch this Lucian. Lucian oh. gets taunted up by the Shen, but now it's Anivia. Oh. Doesn't have to worry about the Olaf ult and is able to easily kite out both Olaf and the Shen, picking up the final two kills of the fight. And that is five for four in favor of uh, Mike's muted. And securing the all-important Drake, denying the soul. So wow, that was a sick fight. We saw that red side, even despite their like 4K gold disadvantage, or maybe it's less by then, but still able to play it so close, getting huge Seraphino layering their CC. Whew. Just impressive performance, impressive team fighting by uh, both sides there. Really like the Lucian, just he presented such a threat that they. Everyone forgot about the Anivia responding with her passive. And mm. Pharaoh and right there showing his skill played, with the Braum. Played so well, hiding in that bush, waiting for mm-hmm. the bot lane to walk up too far so that he's able to pop out and like easily swat down both Kai'Sa and Seraphine. And you can kind of see right now how both how future team fights are going to go in this matchup. It's more of a <laughs> front to back in a sense. Like uh, they had like four people were on the Diana, and then four people were on, I think, the Hecarim. When he jumped in so both sides have someone that, who's going to dive in and both sides are going to be trying to kill the divers first before going onto the back line and yeah. it's just the longer these fights go on the more brom can auto attack every single champion and apply his passive and that's what happened in those last fights basically the lucian was really strong was able to pop off basically with the help of the brom with his passive so very well done on uh mike's muted Oh, and blue team sees the Shen is bot lane and just immediately starts up the Baron, knows that they can shred through this objective and they have Cho'Gath for the extra secure. Are they going to turn Shen going into the ulted Olaf? Seraphine ult only hits a few people and the Baron getting low Three at 1100. Cho'Gath eats it up, but now the team fight, Lucian in the back, able to free fire all of the blue team members going down, but Lucian's still alive. Kills the Seraphine, the Olaf is down, only the Shen remains, and the carries are alive on blue team. Mike's muted with a decisive team fight victory, five for three, and the Baron. I have to say it was so impressive to see Mike's muted. They they got the Baron down to 1900 health and they stopped doing the Baron. 
They stopped doing the Baron, they focused the Olaf and focused the Shen who are in the pit. Olaf can't do anything right now. Olaf was more focused on hitting the Baron than just uh, even attacking the other champions because his job, Olaf's job was to secure the um, the Baron. But they knew that the, with the Cho'gath uh, R, Cho'gath Feast, they can stay on that Baron and they know they have those they can secure the Baron, and very good for Pharaoh and Anivia for just staying alive, so... Yeah, just yeah, an amazing call. Amazing. Interesting fight, I think. So we saw, it from the perspective of Diana, there is a critical moment where she's walking in, and in the pit, there's a great opportunity. Shogath, Hecarim, and Braum, three undesirable targets, but stacked on top of each other, and he does end up going for that ult. He hesitated for a moment, you know, because he want to hit the carries, and we saw the downside of, like, they got onto those three guys and got sick Wombo, but then Anivia and Lucian, when the enemy team is funneled into the pit like that, just clean up. So really, you know, interesting decision making there. It's like, do you take the, the three-man ults on undesirable targets, or do you wait wait for something else? Mm -hmm. And I I think that the blue team with that Baron call really put the pressure on red team and forced Amazing. them to make these very difficult decisions. And I, I love to see that. And now we have a little fight here. Olaf yeah. getting Anivia out. finds the Olaf with here the wall. The Hector here. pushes him over. Uh, Lucian shoots oh, three, down the, the Olaf. And now the yeah. Diana goes and isn't able to find oh, either of them. No. It's just an absolute route. Uh, and that's I think they're going up for the end. Clean ace, and that should be the game. Wow. Went from yeah. very competitive to, to very one-sided to... That, and this is the effect of taking that uh, gold lead over the stacking dragons. You're right that it closes the margin of air, but it does put more agency into the, the team with the gold advantage. Very good go for the game. end. Looks They're like going to go for the end. They have the Baron. 10 seconds on Olaf, 10 seconds on Seraphine. Yeah, this should be it. An easy cleanup. Amazing, amazing. Whoever call, did that shot calling a Baron to, to not finish the Baron and leave it at 1900 has to be commended right there. That was... And, oh, or even going in for the, the desperate, desperation play, but the Nexus is open and all five are firing it down. GG. And Mike's Ben muted, wins. Picks up the series. And My first Nick prediction. <laughs> <laughs> oh, amazing. So now let's discuss who do you guys think is MVP for this game? Gotta be Lucian. The Lucian? Opinion. Yeah, I agree. I think the Lucian played these team fights beautifully, especially that fight where he's able to pop out of the bush and uh, get onto the Kaisa and Seraphine immediately. That that, that seems to be the crux play of this game to me. I would have to agree with you myself. The Lucian was amazing in these team fights, was able to stay alive. He allowed his uh he just played off his teammates and even protected his mid laner when his, uh when the Nivea was passive was going off. I so think. guys, after watching that amazing game, third game between TFT and SKT, can do you guys have and you know all of y'all have unanimously said that Pharaoh on that Lucian was MVP for this game? But who do you think was the MVP of the whole entire series? That's that's a really that's a really tough one. But if I was going to give an MVP for the entire series? I, I would say I would say Green Epic. I honestly, I'm, I'm saying this right now for the entire series, it has to be Green Epic because twice for game one popped off and then sure the Lucian for this game, but Green Epic was the rock basically for this entire series. And Green Epic is the one who also secured all the major objectives, Baron and even the Dragon for mm -hmm. the soul. You know, I, I think Green Epic is like average, think... like for this last game uh, especially puts Green Epic uh, ahead of the curve for series MVP because of the the soul that he's able to secure, the Baron that he's able to secure, uh, just the amount of pressure that he's able to take off of his entire team throughout the entire series, consistently doing his job. It has to be Green Epic for the entire series. Yeah, I mean... I'll defer to you guys, as I didn't catch all of the first two games. Uh, definitely. So is this a, a triple triple header Cho'Gath performance? It was. It was three games of Cho'Gath, where uh, Green Epic, even though he didn't want to be on the leash, was put on 
on the leash and boy did he perform guys yeah. it was a, a close nail-biting two to, two to one series with mike muted prevailing over it's an eighth we want to say a huge thank you for all 10 players who showed up today they they did a standout performance um you know we've seen voidless on that senna is absolutely a force to reckon with entropy landed some great uh, multi-man seraphine alts jtb with his clutch shen ultimate the the team really showed up yeah definitely kudos to them playing a super close series um but sadly there can only be one one challenger in the finals um <laughs> i i have to share one little anecdote so in a past year of this tournament i actually played against green epic in the top lane and we won the first game I was against him. Game two, he picks his cled and proceeds to just eradicate us. Like by the end of this game, I was pa like I was like a Pavlovian dog, where the sound of cled ult would just like I would start quivering, and he smashes us. Game three, fateful moment, his captain puts him on the side. Back to the doghouse, Green Epic, <laughs> and you know what happened? They lost. Oh, good. and so I'm just saying. We'll keep an eye on the on the leashes, on how many dog biscuits get fed. Might be a deciding factor this finals. Oh, it will be a finals to look out for. Hopefully, Jay Jay Quan or a Green Epic will carry on his carrying performance, and we are actually gonna have Jay Quan up here for an MVP interview um, shortly in a bit, guys. You know, how do you think, like, what do you think we'll expect for this finals matchup? I know Eric himself is a little biased. Oh, and, oh, actually, let's hold that thought. As we do have MVP of the semifinals, Green Epic here with us right now, Jaquan. You know, share share us some thoughts. Uh, say, say hello to the audience. Uh, hello, hello, everyone. Yeah, that, yeah, woof, woof. Very riveting gameplay, <laughs> Top. Like, how did you guys pan your camera away from Top when you just see me just auto-attack those minions at such uh, pre precision? Yeah, that's the word. Well, you did earn our ardor as the series MVP, so yeah. congrats on that. I was given the ultimate dog treat of all. <laughs> the <laughs> audience <laughs> approval. Is it too late to take this back? His ego's a little too high right now. <laughs> yeah. No, no. You know, Tofu, before the tournament, he promised me that he would unleash me in any way I wanted. And then, first draft, he just goes, so, uh, they have a tank. How do you feel about Choga? Mm, seems like a broken promise to me. Going into mm -hmm. the finals, do you have any words for your captain? Just don't first pick Choga. At least leave it a little later. Revolt, <laughs> Jaquan. Break the chains. Block that's, and see, that's Teemo. interesting because we were on the cast. I was actually talking about how I thought that first picking the Chogath was an extremely smart draft move. It would be, but it makes me more depressed. Is going to be <laughs> picking uh, a thing. Or, so, so, uh, Jake Juan, your captain in the chat says, listen, buddy, they banned Alawi Darius. W were you even given an option to be off oh, yeah. that leash? He, he acts as if this is, like, he was like, this is the one game we'll let you off. And he goes, oh, they used one, oh, two bans at the end there? I wonder what they'll ban here after we pick all their prior picks already. <laughs> wonder what else there is to ban anymore. All right. <laughs> the question that's on everyone's minds which do you prefer, Cho'Gath or Scion? Cho'Gath. Because apparently with Scion, dude, you don't even do damage with Scion half the time. <laughs> Cho'Gath Cho does so much damage. Just like, you have to really extend the timeline. Like, his numbers are huge. But if you ever, like, look at a single trade, it's like two damage. The difference is I can heal all the damage they do and slowly technically win over the course of two mm. minutes of fighting. And how did how did you feel in that game uh, about the pressure that was on you to secure both that Dragon Soul objective and then the Baron immediately after? 
Oh, I checked the number. I was like 300 above their smite. So I was like, oh, this this should not be the most <laughs> difficult to cure out there. So like, no they're sweat. At, they're at cool as a cucumber. They're at 700 smite. I had 1200 chomp. <laughs> not a worry. And in, in the, the Baron world. pit, like everyone else was like hitting Olaf, and I just autoed Baron and like just kept my eye on the health bar and kept my <laughs> finger on the R key. Like, I didn't yeah. bother trying to. CC the Olaf, he was ulted anyway, and I don't do damage, so I'm like, you know what? You know those carnival games where you just try to, like, hit the light when it hits the middle? Mm -hmm. I was just playing that, except a little easier. Well, it sounds like you uh, thoroughly enjoyed making the game-winning plays for your team. Yes, the highlight, for my highlights of each game is when I see the champions, enemy champions, have this, like, red circle floating around them. I'm like, oh, I can press R now. So Green Epic, I have to ask you, if you win this tournament, what are you going to do with your 1820 skin? Mm -hmm. Where's it going? Mm, I don't know yet. I was like, you for this Disney tournament... <laughs> yeah, yeah, maybe that's... <laughs> like, I, I bought Dark Star Choga because I'm like, oh, it's so OP. They'll put me on it one or two games. I want to look cool. Don't want to be basic skin Choga. <laughs> and then I buy the skin, and then the next day, I'm on it every single game. Like, oh. <laughs> The you worst investment. Cool. Really, really getting the value out of your investment. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. The 10 gemstones could not have been used more often than this. So, uh, my boy Green Epic, you do realize that Eric's also in this call, the enemy team captain. So he's been hearing all oh. this joke out talk. So. Interesting. My former captain's here who uh, decided that he didn't want to win with me on his team, but now decides <laughs> Now decides he's not going to be jumping to do your snowball. <laughs> A little bit yeah. out here. So Maybe I'll pay you back. Have any Maybe I'll give you that one. Spicy trash talk. Anything you want to say to each other before we go <sighs> into the finals match? Are you going to support the leash on me, Eric? Put it that way. Back to the doghouse. <laughs> Not like this. Might Not need like a muzzle this. after this series. No. <laughs> Oof. All right, some fighting words. I see how it is, Eric. Wow. Fighting words indeed. All right, I think we're going to get right into the game, so I might probably have to leave, go prep, go devise all, right. all the ways I can leave up Choga. Okay. Well, it has <laughs> been a pleasure. Thank you for joining us, Eric and Jaquan, uh, Madre de Flame and um, Green Epic. Uh, we look extremely forward to seeing the finals match between you guys. Good luck to both of you. Right. Yep. Good luck, Good Eric. Good luck, Justin. I'll see you out there.